We got uh, really crazy news. Two absolutely shocking stories. The first, I did not believe it when good sir Brandon read it. I said, there's no way that's true. The governor of New Mexico has just decreed the possession of guns to be illegal. That, that's that's the, the headline. I'm not exaggerating. I didn't believe it when I heard it. Granted, there's some nuance to it, but outright, the governor has declared a public health emergency in which it is now illegal to possess a firearm in public, even though the state is an open carry state. This is... I'll, I'll keep it light for the intro, but for those that know their history, when executives declare the seizure of weapons, typically, historically, in many places, really bad things follow that. I am uh, extremely worried to hear this news breaking today and um, 10 minutes ago, uh, maybe about 20 minutes ago. On top of this, new information is breaking with the release of the grand jury recommendations. The grand jury in Georgia voted to indict sitting members of the Senate, including Lindsey Graham, three. And Fannie Willis has just declined those indictments. Understand the, uh, I mean, this is, let's just uh, start over. The grand jury in Georgia voted to indict three Republican members of the Senate. New Mexico has just decreed possession of guns to be illegal. This is going to be a fun episode. But before we get started, hey, join us live in Miami while you can, I guess. Go to TimCast.com. In the little menu bar, there is a link to the TimCast IRL in Miami event. It's from 6 to 1030, October 6th. It's a Friday. Don Jr., Matt Gates, Patrick Bet David, me, Luke Rudkowski, and Ian, we're all going to be there. And we're going to have a pre-show for you, a bunch of free stuff from uh, companies that are uh, a part of Public Square. The whole event is sponsored by Public Square. I think Public Square is one of, is, is the tip of the spear. It's one of the most effective and one of the most important tools in winning the culture war, building a parallel economy, and it is an honor and a privilege to have them as our as our main sponsor for the event and only sponsor. So we really, really do hope to see you there. Uh, tickets available at uh, TimCast.com. Smash that like button. Click join us. Become a member. No members only show today, but you can support us directly by uh, uh, becoming a member. I, I got to shout this out, too, because I, I haven't done this. When you become a member, you get access to our Discord server. On our Discord server, it is a vibrant community where there is a pre-show. I believe there's a pre-show. There's an after show where members of TimCast.com hang out and continue the conversation. There, there are communities that are working on projects, sharing ideas, developing games. And we've been actively shouting out every Friday. We're not doing it this week because we got to promote the, the Miami event. But every Friday, or I should say we try to for the past several Fridays, one of our members gets the ad space. So Friday is an, a dedicated ad to one of our members. And uh, we shout out your company and uh, because you guys are the, the backbone of everything we do. So we really do appreciate that. This is going to be really interesting. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the show. Joining us tonight to talk about this and a whole lot more is Brandon Herrera. Thanks so, so much for having me, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Who are you? What do you do? So uh, my name is Brandon Herrera. I am uh, well a, a YouTuber on the internet. I talk about guns, gun safety, try to uh, blend entertainment and comedy with, you know, trying to teach, you know, Second Amendment activism, uh, firearm history, all, all sorts of things. But also more recently, I'm now running for Congress against incumbent rhino uh, Tony Gonzalez. <laughs> in uh cd 23 we're we're uh i'm i, I may be one of the most two a absolutists you, you'll ever meet uh if you've i don't know if you've ever heard the arguments i've made but i've even argued with republicans about the right to keep and bear nuclear weapons yes. and yes. biological weapons and i, I have love, and i am a fan <laughs> and i would love to talk about that um because it's not a question of whether or not it's morally correct it's a question of legally allowed yeah. or protected and i'm of the position that uh you're allowed to keep and bear arms and arms is broad I would but, love to get into that with you because that is it. such a fascinating topic. <laughs> it's funny when I'm talking to politicians and I'm like, can we have nuclear weapons? And they're like, no, no, mm, I don't know if I agree with that. But uh, uh, anyway, we got Phil here hanging out. How you doing? I am Phil Labonte. I'm the lead singer of All That Remains. I'm an anti-communist and counter-revolutionary. I'm yeah. also pretty anti-communist these days, yes! Phil. Hi, everyone. Ian Crossland. Happy to be here. Let's roll. We got Carter. What's up, guys? Taking a break to update Pro <clears throat> Tools and stuff and filling in for Kellen and Surge. So let's do it. Here is the first story from the Santa Fe New Mexican, and I'm going to be as uh, um, deliberate in my introduction here. First, 
Governor bans carrying guns in Albuquerque after 11-year-old killed. Let's, uh, you want to pull that article up? You have that there. there you go. And uh, NewsGuard certified 100 out of 100. I, 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 I can't believe this. Governor bans carrying guns in Albuquerque after 11. It's not just Albuquerque. It's, uh, uh, there's like a metro limit. Governor Michelle Luan Grisham on Friday announced a new public health order that she said will ban people from carrying firearms, either open or concealed, in Albuquerque and throughout the Bernalillo County for the next 30 days, regardless of whether they have a permit. Grisham, a Democrat, issued an executive order Thursday evening declaring gun violence a public health emergency. This is beyond unconstitutional. But I will tell you this right now. I'm willing to believe the police with smiles on their face will will arrest you. If you have a weapon, the order states no person other than law enforcement uh, or licensed security officer shall possess a firearm, either openly or concealed with cities or counties averaging 1000 or more violent crimes per 100,000 residents per year since 2021. So because of that, it only applies to the city of Albuquerque and Bernalillo County, Lujan Grisham said, and can only be enforced by New Mexico State Police, whose presence in the state's largest city would be significant over the next month. We've seen this kind of things happen in various countries, happen throughout history, and they almost always, I think it's fair to say always, lead to very, very, very awful outcomes. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer for the awful outcome, but uh, typically disarming the population by decree results in active conflict between the citizenry and law enforcement. And, um, oh, I know all of these libs are going to get so bent out of shape when I say this, but for those of you that know American history, you will know that the first battle, which wasn't really even a battle of the American Revolution, was because the crown was trying to seize the weapons from local militia. Basically, farmers who got together and said, we do not believe these laws are justified. And they went and said, okay, well, we're going to come take all your guns from you. And they said, no, you're not. When uh, uh, we were setting up the show, what's the big story, I always ask? And we've got this huge story about the Georgia grand jury indicted, voted to indict three sitting members of the Senate, Republicans, and only because the Democrats are like, no, nah, we're not going to do that. It didn't happen. Even though the, this is what the grand jury does. This is where we're at right now in this country. And then Brandon over here says New Mexico just banned by decree uh, uh, carrying weapons. And I'm like, no, 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 that's wrong. That's wrong. Google didn't. I'm like, no, this is just some kind of like platitude. This is some kind. Of, and then uh, Brandon's like, nope, Santa Fe, New Mexico. It literally here it just came up in my Instagram feed. Wow. I, I, the first time I looked at it, I'm like, ah, you know, maybe this is somebody being a little dramatic on Twitter. Because, you know, sometimes people... You know, they, they see a story and then they extrapolate something that's not quite correct. Like, it's not all the way verifiable. They just kind of go their own way with it. But sure enough, looked into it, and that's exactly what it seems like just happened. I will say, amazing. Arizona didn't ban guns. Some tyrant is attempting to. And that New tyrant, or New Mexico, thank you very much. New Mexico didn't ban guns. Some tyrant's trying to. And it's up to the people of New Mexico to decide whether or not that tyrant's going to speak for the people. This He's, is, this is the, the uh, inflection point. The question we have right now is, is it a legal executive order? And the question for a person in my position is, what advice do you give the average person? Uh, I th First of all, I think that it's clearly unconstitutional. There is no provision in the Constitution, in the, the federal Constitution, the, the United States Constitution, that empowers governors to revoke the rights of any citizen under any reason. So, or to create law. Fair enough. True. Um, so there's that. So first of all, right off the bat, it's unconstitutional. You're going to have to have people get together, peacefully open carry, peacefully disregard the law, and you're gonna, it's going to have to be a... a it's a, not a law, though. Well, this the, is the, the decree. The, this is the question I have. We, uh, my, my position is almost always, you know, we challenge the law through the legal system. When, when legislatures pass laws, it's something we have to get active on with knocking on doors and filing lawsuits. Many of these laws are unjust and get removed instantly. It is extremely likely that this thing is going to be struck down almost immediately. However, the governor did it on a Friday intentionally so that she's guaranteed a few days of this being in effect, which is using the procedure as the punishment. What do you say to the average person? This is not law. This is unconstitutional. And I would argue should be considered seditious or illegal on the part of the governor. It should be illegal. It, sh it should be cr a criminal act to subvert the Constitution. Yep. And it is, actually. 
The question is, who will the police, in what direction will the police decide to enforce this? Do we then say, you must abide by decree of governor? Well, that's not legal in this country. In which case, we would say to people, disregard decree of governor? Well, now you've got police saying you're inciting criminal actions or something to that effect. The law is broken. The legal system has shattered. You're saying if you tell a cop in New Mexico to defy the governor that you're committing a crime? No, if you tell someone they should re keep and bear arms regardless of the decree, mm -hmm. you are now inciting someone to, as per the governor's oh. view, violate their public health order under executive powers, which is not law. But the police will say you're inducing someone to commit a crime. So I did just look this up. This is kind of interesting because like, I, I agree with a lot of that. Like there, there is no provision that allows the governor to defy, you know, the Bill of Rights. That, that's very basic. But they're having state police enforce this, which is why I was really curious what the, the New Mexico state constitution says about it. So Article 2 of the uh, Constitution of New Mexico provides, quote, no law shall abridge the right of the citizen to keep and bear arms for security and defense for lawful hunting and recreational use and for all other lawful purposes. But nothing herein shall be held to permit the carrying of concealed weapons, which was kind of interesting. So this is the New Mexico Bill of Rights, Section 2, and uh, right to bear arms is Article 2, Section 6. And uh, it's exactly as you said, we have it pulled up here. And this was, um, it looks like as of November 2nd, 1971. So the governor... If the police, I'm hoping the police just say, here's, here's what needs to happen. We need a statement from the head of state police publicly right now to the press. This is not correct. It will not be enforced. The citizens have a right to keep and bear arms, you know, as, as regulated. And we will not arrest anyone. I'm sorry. I've seen it happen too many times. We all know uh, the sto a story that I heard about. But it's actually relatively prominent. A woman from Pennsylvania was going to Atlantic City. She had a revolver in her purse. She, gets, she crosses the bridge into Jersey and gets pulled over. Officer comes and says, you know, I pulled you over. And she goes, I don't. And then she says, but I do want to let you in, just keep, make sure you're informed. I, I do have my, my weapon, my, my, my gun on me. I do have a permit for it. And it's here in my bag. And he went, thank you, ma'am. Out of the vehicle, please. You're under arrest. That's a felony. And Wow. The only reason, uh, th so this is a story that was told to me by a gun shop in New Jersey. Apparently it was a big deal. The only reason she got off was that her lawyers pulled up a, 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 a case where a celebrity was given a special pass. What's her name? I don't know. The, I don't know the woman's name. Is it, I was in a gun shop. This is what the guy told me. So it, I've it, heard it, this story too. Like I, I can there, there was, verify that this story has gone around. There was, yeah. Right. There was some celebrity who got a uh, special treatment. Their lawyer cited this case and then the DA was like, okay, drop it, drop it, drop it. We're going to lose this one. It's going to set bad precedent. But the only thing that matters to me is that the cop with a smile on his face, said, ma'am, I know the bridge is five minutes right there. I could turn you around right now and say, just bring it home. But I want to destroy you. Instead, he decided, I'm going to ruin your life. Right? Like, so I'm, like, there's a lot of people that are ACAB and there's a lot of people that are very, oh, don't cross the thin blue line. Both positions are stupid. Right? You have to have some amount of policing in your in your society and in your community and if you go to communities that are riddled with crime and you talk to the normal people that are not committing crimes they're like send more cops we need more police because we need to get these people that are committing the crimes off the streets if you go to places that are high crime the police know the people that are committing the crimes they can pick them out usually it's a you know if it's a major city a couple hundred, couple few hundred or whatever. You could lock those people up and that'll solve a large portion of the crime. That doesn't mean that every time a cop pulls you over, it's a good idea to tell them all your personal private in information. Concealed is concealed. Hush if a cop pulls you over. I think if you have to tell about your gun, you have to tell about your gun. I, I, right? I, I think they are trying to create physical conflict in this country. There's, look... These videos of the feds arresting J6ers with rifles pointed at them. Some mm -hmm. like portly fellow walks out of his house in his shorts, like scratching his face like, huh? And they're just all pointing rifles. What happened in Provo, Utah, when they went in that guy's house, shot and killed him? Yep. It, it appears, maybe it's not the case, but it certainly appears like they are doing everything they're possible to provoke a violent outbreak. This right here in New Mexico is basically chucking dynamite into a crowd and being like, let's see what happens. I know a lot of like the case that you were talking about earlier where like the, the cop you said actively chose that he made that decision 
to ruin her life or at least make her life extremely difficult for the next few years. That that's where like I've learned a lot uh, just being around like you know donut operator Cody yeah. uh, is more, like my best friend. He's great. I, I've learned a lot about policing and different stuff like that through his eyes and, mm-hmm. and sure. stuff like that. And a big thing that he harps on is officer discretion mm-hmm. with stuff like that. Yeah. Like that that's something that and I think that's where a lot of the nuance gets lost between like the A cab crowd, the thin blue line crowd. Like the officer's always wrong, the officer's always right. Like officer discretion is really an important thing that is not utilized enough. And I know that there's a lot of officers, a lot of police officers that don't live in the towns that they that they police. And I understand that there's a lot of security issues that can come up and and there's safety issues. If you're if you're in a place that's got a lot of crime and you're actively throwing people in jail and you live in that town, then there's a possibility of retribution and stuff. I get it. But. If you have police officers that you see regularly and you know you can have a rapport with them and the police officers can have a rapport with you. If a cop knows that you're not one of the handful of of garbage cans that are out there causing all kinds of problems in town, the cop should. And I obviously it's not every cop, but the cop really should take that into consideration. So shout out to Elon Musk uh, for helping bring awareness to this. He, oh, really? he, he, he just responded, but it's all, like his response is already generating a reaction. Yeah. So I, to the, the story, I, I tweeted the story out, holy no F. Uh, and so a whole bunch of people have, have jumped on it. That's what gives me hope is yeah. that the, this, this was such a bold and psychotic move. It's like dropping a boulder into a pond. Everyone notices the bang and the, and the massive splash just, just yeah. shocked everybody. And the cops, the New Mexico state cops that are listening right now or they're going to hear this story have an opportunity to exercise some discretion right now. You got to protect your citizens. You, you, I Absolutely. mean, especially if you you swore an oath to the Constitution of the, not only the United yeah. States but I imagine to New Mexico. So it let's is uh, obligation. And there's and you know you mentioned the Constitution of New Mexico. I'm sorry to cut you off too real quick, but like almost every state in the union has something that resembles the Second Amendment. Yes. All of them, every single one has something similar. It's not the exact same thing, but all of them have something like the Second Amendment because. Owning firearms is one of the things that is a clear indication that you are free. Right? California doesn't have one. Hey, uh, <laughs> God, and it is they, biting they them in to? the ass daily. They must have. U- well, actually, I don't nope. know. They never really did. It's a newer state relative to the rest yeah. of them. But, but yeah, so, I mean, so maybe Hawaii doesn't as well. But, you know, like, seriously, it's like the, the, the Second Amendment is supposed to, pr- to be, you know, supremacy clauses means that it's supposed to be the supreme law. But, you know. So... Man, you know, I was, I, we, we, we're, cult, the culture war this morning was, was, was very interesting. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. Poor Alex didn't really get a chance to speak. Didn't really speak, so I can't really, you know, thanks for coming anyway, buddy. But uh, Brianna Wu was here, <laughs> and the general sentiment among many of these leftists, one thing I love that what they do is they take tweets of mine where I say something like civil war, but they remove the context of why I said it. So it's just a bunch of tweets that blanket say civil war or whatever, but it'll be like, I don't know, there'll be an article that says something to the effect of far-left extremists, you know, opens fire, killing so-and-so, and I'll be like, civil war, and then they'll remove that story and just snip the little statement. And then imply that I'm insinuating that there's some kind of, uh, or that I'm, I want to happen. Quite the opposite. But uh, in our conversation, every single time it comes up, someone will say to me, touch grass, right, is the old meme. Go talk to regular people. And my response is just... <gasps> Do you think that during, like, the first, the American Civil War, that some dude walked out of his house in Atlanta, looked at his neighbor and said, do you want Civil War? And then the other guy went, I certainly do. Ah, let's fight. No, if you lived in New York and you lived in in Atlanta, you'd walk outside and no one's talking about it because your life was different. You were focused on your farm or your shop or your, the, 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 the minutia and routine of your daily lives. Everyone seems to think that you need a mass mobilization of half the country rising up and form- formally declaring hostilities against the other half, and that's never been the case. In this instance, the reason why this story is alarming, we've just quite literally been talking about Lexington and Concord of the past week, when a couple hundred redcoats were like, hand over your guns. And they were like, not, you know, you, you can pry it from my cold dead hands. And then they tried. And that's considered a handful of militiamen, maybe it's a little hyperbox, a handful, but local militiamen, regular people who, bought, who had weapons, saying no was the first battle of the American Revolution. 
the shot heard around the world. And and uh, to even further your point, if, like going back to the American Civil War after the you know you've got the revolution with Lexington, Lexington and Concord, but in the American re or in the uh, the American Civil War, uh, it, it, there's always usually a focal point that happens, where, and it's usually some sort of government decree of some sort. Yep. Because uh, the one in the American Civil War, a lot of people point to, is when Lincoln uh, went to the South and he went to a lot of Southern states and said, "I expect you to send me." 75,000 troops so we can go invade the states in rebellion. Yep. Which and is it was, uh, like I think he demanded uh, North Carolina and a few others and the in the response was overwhelmingly mm, I think we're going to secede instead. Yeah, so a lot of people always get mad when we talk about this stuff. They're like, "You're not a historian and you're getting the facts wrong." It's like, "Okay, dude, I read a, I read a couple academic historical papers and watched a few documentaries. So I'm probably wrong." But the general my general understanding was that seven I think it was seven states seceded before Lincoln was inaugurated. And then you had states, I think it was like uh, uh, Tennessee, West Virginia, um, uh, Virgi well, not West Virginia, but Virginia itself, because there was no West Virginia. Yeah. Virginia was like, you know, we kind of want to secede, but we probably shouldn't. And they're like, okay, so we're not gonna. Then Lincoln said, hey, these states in active rebellion, I'm gonna conscript troops to go quell that rebellion. And that shifted sentiment in these states to where they were like, okay, now, now you're, you want us to go to war? Okay, this is this has gone too far. We're you out. You want us to go to war with our neighbor? Yeah, yeah. It was like not not go to war with Canada or Britain or France or whatever. Like you want us to go to war with like the state that we border. Right? Like, are you are you crazy? But this this shifted sentiment. But I I do think it's fair to say that's that's actually we're 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 so far away from that. Yeah. Bleeding yeah, Kansas yeah. is a better example of where we may be today, and the American Revolution may have better uh, analogs with the Spanish Civil War. But uh, Bleeding Kansas was a seven year conflict. That, that it, not even just Kansas, but in the territories outside of the actual states, in the U.S. territories, with the debate over which state would be a slave state or not, you had people murdering each other. So I look at this, history doesn't repeat it rhymes. Yeah. What happens today will not be a one-for-one -one reflection of what happened back then because the internet, I mean, that's, that's the easy one. Things are very different. I have, I, in, 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 look, man, you know, and I was, I'm talking to Brianna Wu earlier. And she's saying, like, we need to stop being at each other's necks, calm down, and, you know, move this country forward. Everything they're doing does nothing but escalate. And I mean the, the establishment, the machine, the DOJ. Let's not even, I won't even say Democrats. I'll say the DOJ. When you have Joe Biggs get 19 and a half years in prison for, for this stuff. I'm like, yeah, you realize that's just going to make everyone angrier. They like to say that it's absurd to bring up the concept of civil war. So I asked a few simple questions of Brianna. Do you think the people that uh, stormed the Capitol when Joe Biden wins in 2024 will just pat their hands and say, well, good game, everybody. We're done. Or do you think they just say we are still angry, angry enough to break into the Capitol building? Yeah. There's there's been no logical assessment by anyone trying who, who has takes issue with Barbara Walter, Stephen Marsh or I. There's been no logical argument against anything we've said. And these are, those are two Democrats I'm citing specifically who have said more so than I that we are, we are, in, we are in or actively uh, facing civil war. There's been no argument as to what the off-ramp would be. Yeah, and it, it, that goes back to like the classic meme of like, who radicalized you? You did. It's, like, I, it's, I, it's, it's those, it's those, it's, it's the actions of those mm -hmm. people that because yeah. they're just, they, they're, it's a, it's a lot of it's almost a direct comparison to what you know people like Jordan Peterson have said about Ukraine. I, like we need to figure out what victory is because it's like you know yeah. is winning a good thing in in the long run. It's like if, if do you want to if you rub your nose in the cat piss is that really winning long term or are you just building resentment? Are you making things worse? That's and I look at what the DOJ is doing. Uh, a video was just put up by I think it was Julie Kelly of Enrique Tario on the day of January six. With her, he's being filmed. They were filming this. And he had no idea they got in the building. He was surprised to see it. And the evidence is all there. This is a fabrication against him. Uh, according to her tweet, the feds tried to get Enrique to say that he was working with Trump or that Trump had some involvement. They wanted to connect Trump directly to Proud Boys so they can put a brand name on insurrection and say Trump orchestrated it, likely to remove his name from the ballot. Enrique refused. So they give him 22 years. Plus, it'll be 22 and a half. You know what I said? There is something Joe Biden can do if he wants to simmer things down. He can issue a blanket pardon of all the of all J6s right now. And he can say, like Shay's Rebellion, he can say, it was wrong of what you did. 
but we cannot survive as a nation if we're constantly at each other's throats. That's why I think it's fair to say for those that have spent time already, time served, and for everyone else, we are giving you a good faith effort. They won't. Well, they, they might. It, that's we got to <coughs> make sure that we don't go so far as to say that the solution won't happen. You have to propose a solution and allow it to hang. So I get what you're saying that that's that's probably a, a good perspective to have. Um, that being said, it will take Democrats to stop the escalation. Like Republicans can't like Republicans and the people that are being persecuted by the Democrats, by the, the establishment, they're not in a position to say, OK, we're going to go ahead and chill things out. And the reason is because all of the things that they're accused of are all things that are legal. Like they 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 fabricate stuff. The guy that from Infowars that's going to go to jail. Like, Owen or they Schroeder. Want, like Owen Schroeder. He was speaking. Like Tario was talking to people, right? The, and these aren't. It wasn't incitement. It is such. These are such tortured accusations, and they have to be s stretched and twisted so much to make them fit. It's ridiculous. And, I, and because of that, it has to be the, the people that are in the position of power saying, okay, we're going to stop using our power because the people that are not in positions of power are not in any position to say, we're going to stop escalating because they're not the ones escalating. Exactly. Tim, you brought it up. Fonnie Williams actually refused to indict these people. So, so that's an example of someone in power not taking the next step. Here's a story from TimCast.com. Fulton County Special Grand Jury voted to <sighs> indict Lindsey Graham and two other GOP senators. Wow. The Special Grand Jury in Fulton County, Georgia, recommended charges against former President Trump, 18 of his associates, as well as South Carolina Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, as well as Georgia, Georgia Republican Senators David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler. It is only because... I don't I, I think it doesn't serve the political ends of the Democratic Party that they overlooked these elements of the, these individuals in the uh, indictment. For what purpose are they going to go after these individuals? Is it going to help them remove Trump? No, they went after mm -hmm. Trump's staff and his lawyers. Here's what matters. It brings up a good point. The D.A. did not take that step. However, I push back on this. The D.A. took the most extreme step of arresting Trump and Trump's lawyers. This shows the political nature of the indictments. What if, if the grand jury said these people, as well as the other 18 plus Trump, should be indicted? And Fani goes, not these three. It shows you that everything she's doing is purely political. Mm -hmm. It also shows you in these districts, it doesn't matter what is true. A grand jury will indict sitting members of the Senate if asked to. That is the sentiment of touching grass. This is the funny thing about when people say, oh, go touch grass. They're like, you mean like a grand jury that tried to indict three Republican members of the Senate? Those are those are regular people that are that are called in for jury duty, are given uh, evidence and said, would you criminally charge members of, of, of the Senate? They said, absolutely. So you want to go talk to regular people? I'm telling you, man. People are ready. People are angry. And of course, it's never going to be 90 percent or 80 percent. But I think the American Revolution was, the colloquial term was a third for, a third against, and a third don't yeah. care. It's actually more like closer to 40% were in favor of, closer to like 20 some odd percent were opposed, and the, uh, 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 the plurality was like, we just don't care at all. If we were going to have, if there's going to be an American Revolution too, it would just be, like the Constitution is written so that we can revolve the laws and create an internal revolution without having to overthrow the government. So like, it would be a technical revolution, which we're kind of seeing with the internet, but like, uh, it's it so wouldn't naive, be though, like an the, attack. It would be a change in the system. It was. And it it was, doesn't have to be. It could be cool. But it was naive of the founding fathers to assume that men in power would agree to give it up because it was written on a piece of paper. I don't know. I, I think that's a bit of an overstatement that they that, that they were unaware that men. Uh, well, considering the statements of Thomas Jefferson, I'm I I know like yeah. <laughs> they were very serious about what happens to countries. Uh, although it is it is true that Jefferson walked that back yeah. the Tree of Liberty statement yeah. and said that's a little bit too egregious. Um, because that was pre-war talk. It's a it well, was, no, it's it because was also pretty specific on a time frame, which right. was a little aggressive. It was, it, what was it, it twenty to thirty years? He said he saw he saw what happened in France. 
right? Because yeah. like, what after, year did he say that? Oh, sorry, I'm not sure exactly what year he said it. But the point is, like the French, the French Revolution that happened like right around. It started like right around or, or after the, it was like the 1807. Yeah, so, so. like so, and they were, you know, there were Americans that were going over there and and talking to the French because they were there was all this talk of liberty and stuff. The French Revolution. Oh, it began was in 1789. Yeah, it was an S show. All right, it was a total the S Constitution? show. No, the, the, the French, French Revolution. Revolution. Oh, right, right, right. But it was a, but it was an absolute actually, S show. Same year as the Constitution and the yeah, formation no, of the United States. It's not a coincidence. Within a couple of years, they just started killing everybody. The the word terrorism comes from the French Revolution. The terror is what they called yep. it. And that was just slaying people for the the horrible crime Bro. of not being Robes, enough. Robespierre Robes yeah. went full Mickey Mouse Fantasia, dancing people to the guillotine Psycho. one by one. Psychos, it. and and it, it was it was nuts, and so anyway. This is what people need to understand about things like this. A grand jury voted to indict these men. The DA decided not to do it. The DA went after the president and his lawyers. So the DA took a more extreme action, and I think it shows, as I stated earlier, this is political. The important factor here is that it shows that regular people also want to see these things done. Mm -hmm. That's what people need to understand about where this goes. And I will say it right now. There is one strong action that can be taken to stop it all. A couple, actually. First, the indictments against Trump should be dropped. And Joe Biden should pardon the January Sixers. And that is how, when you're trying to resolve a conflict, you have to be the one to make the compromise. And that would take so much of the wind out of the sails of the current Trump campaign and the entire right yeah. at the moment. Like, I, I, I don't, I seriously don't think it's ever going to happen. But because I, they're I exacerbating. Would, I mean, th these personalities are saying more, 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 no matter what. Yeah. Would you do the same? Would you pardon Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, Hillary I didn't Clinton? say. I didn't say Joe Biden. No, I'm asking if you would. Because like you said, you have to be the first one to, to make the, the first move if you want to end this conflict. Would you be the one to do that? It, so let's, let's slow down and talk about the specifics of charges against Trump over January 6th and the people on January 6th. If Joe Biden and, and Hillary Clinton were criminally charged... And the Democratic Party, the DNC, over the Steele dossier and those moves that were made against Trump with, Russia, with Russiagate, I would, I would sit down with, with, with me personally and say, all of that goes away, we're done, and the J6 stuff is done, and we start here and we try and figure it out. I see it like that. I see it as a, it, it has to be Not the connected. Burisma stuff. It can't be like even Burisma. No. Nope. I don't think you can get a prisoner exchange without offering a pardon to... to uh, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and Hillary like think of it as a prisoner exchange if you can't find compassion and do it because you just want you think it's a good move think of it as like we're trading victims here to try to end this is it with a white piece or something that would something. require them getting into some sort of legal trouble in the first place right and the, the issue is there there's nothing to drop as of right now the, with hillary well you preemptively partner for this e email scandal having Sidney blumenthal having him set up osprey global what's, solutions in what's Libya. The, what's the point of of pardoning hillary clinton when she wasn't even prosecuted like there's a guarantee that she won't be prosecuted in the future there's no chance that she's getting prosecuted I think they feel like if Trump gets into yeah. office, they'll all get prosecuted. I don't think Hillary will get prosecuted, but a lot of people are going to, if mean, Trump gets in. He didn't, if she didn't get prosecuted the first time he was in office. Right. If it wasn't happening then, it's... it's. Well, I don't know. Trump is maybe about to go scorched earth. Now, I'm not saying that I don't want Hillary Clinton to get prosecuted either. Like, I hear your argument, and I totally disagree. I want to put all those sons of bitches in jail. <laughs> so, that's just me, though. And there, there lies the challenge. They want to put all the J6s in jail. Yeah. And the only way we move forward right now is for one there are no charges against democrats for everything they did with russia gate and the steel dossier so it's not it's a moot point they would need to lay down their attacks and say we're going to chill out right now and give a little and stop attacking so much the fact that the republicans aren't doing to. anything there there they're, there's nothing for the republicans to stop doing mm -hmm. right now right now we say like hey there's current active hostilities in in lawfare we're asking the democrats stop the republicans haven't done anything so you know next question have they have they filed criminal charges against any of the Democrats over the Steele dossier? Uh, nothing not, uh, over anything related to Russiagate and those lies. Has anyone done a deep, deep investigation into uh, what would happen with Ukraine Gate and 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 uh, collusion between government and the private and private law to go after Trump for subversion of our of our government? Was there a sedition charge? Nothing. So all that's happening now is, yeah, we're not throwing any stones over here. We're asking you to stop. If they don't then that, that I, I look man it's not about what should happen what should happen is an election happens in 2024 
the right person for the job wins and everybody says, OK, well, you know, we'll try again next time. That's, now, that's that, not popular. That brings up an inter interesting I think question, I think. Do you think there ever will be charges brought in the future uh, over what's going on in Ukraine right now as far as like the Biden involvement yes, and the money if, laundering? If Do you Trump think wins. so? Really? OK, well. Well, I'll put it this right. way. I believe that there is a probability it happens if Trump wins. Outside of that, no. Hmm. And that could be 17 percent. You know what I mean? Right. I bet Joe Biden will pardon Hunter the day before he leaves office. Oh, yeah, of course. He'll pardon Hunter and Hillary. He might pardon a bunch of them. Yep. Of course he will. Well, that's, that's what they, So that's why you. Done. That's why we got to pardon him first. That's my point. They're gonna. <laughs> I miss the can't... entertaining days when the president would just pardon rappers and shit. Yeah, like, man. Well, Trump did. Like, like, yeah, exactly. here, here, if the they're issue, untouchable, Ian, like play the game. Be the like, okay, is, you're untouchable. The issue right now I, is I agree. if they are going after Donald Trump in his first term to falsely accuse him of being a Russian spy, and then you're the whole time saying just pardon him for doing it. It's like yo, you've got someone who sho shoved you up against the wall and put a blade to your neck, and then you said, you know, the only way out of this is, is if I allow you to do it. Sounds like Alex Stein you're talking about. Who, actually, I, uh, they pulled a knife on me on his show one time. Oh, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying insane. that who the did? Democrats are engaged in... Alex. a joke? No. Yeah, it was a joke, okay, but it was a real cool. knife. Uh, the Democrats have been funny? engaged in hostilities against the, but the I populist them. right since Trump got elected. And the right has done nothing except for January 6th. Maybe I'm crazy, man. I, I, I don't know if we're in the end. I don't know if this is like revelation, if the Bible's real, if forgiveness is actually valuable, or if we're just tricked into thinking that kindness, compassion, it, and forgiveness it, it, it is valuable. It is, but it has to come from the people committing the acts. It's only good in society. Trump supporters have done nothing since Trump got but elected. You, if you only live is like, we're only going to get past this if you apologize. You never what, get what to the What do apology. we apologize for? Yeah. What? That's... It's a blanket. It's for everything they for ever what? did. For what? I'm apologizing no, for Hillary's no, crimes before no. she has to. But we're not you committed a that. bunch of serious crimes and continue to wage lawfare against us while we sit back and do nothing, but we're going to apologize to you? This is how you end up dead. This is how... We're all going to end how, up dead this is how, Okay. Anyway. Oh, okay, so then just Moving give on. up everything. I mean, what? <laughs> the, the way <laughs> to end up dead is by suggesting a pardon? By constantly laying down and saying, hey, it's okay if you rain piss on us. Dude... What's your, I mean, what's the op optional solution then? The option is, is That's law not a lawfare. Yeah, sue, sue the absolute hell out of everyone that violates your rights. But sue no, but, but with, it's, with it's Trump wins. Fair enough. Through ballot, so Trump that lost by 42,000 votes. That's that's it, insane. It's, it's Trump like lost in 2020 000. by 42,000 votes. Well, zero point like, zero but zero. did you tally the votes yourself? How do you know that that number was accurate? They give you a little bit. They give you a little piece. They're like, it was 51-49. Don't worry about it. Uh, you got You have it, to. You have this to is the most something. Like, I, mean, I, mean, is, I definitely it, don't believe vote tallies without seeing the code of the machines. Okay, that are sure, tallying the but, votes. but now you're making different arguments that aren't. aren't, well, the 40, aren't I'm sorry. Right, right. Part of the conversation. If Donald Trump lost by forty-two thousand votes across three states, then the best course of action right now is ballot harvesting, voter registration, and political rallying, commercials, etc. But I don't agree with the if. I don't believe that he won by 42,000 votes. I just haven't seen the proof. Well, you, mean, need to, you need to sure. prove me and show me the data and the code so of the tallies. You, so then what but is that's, that, that, I believe that proprietary companies own our no, no, voting well, machines. So you think, are, you think they stole it from Trump by hacking voting machines? I think that it is undeterminable, and I'm not going to believe one or the other unless I see the proof one okay. way or the other. So this is the way it works. Your options right now are to be trampled and have your rights stolen from you and destroyed, to try to vote to win... Pick one. Uh, these Wait, these are, false are, binaries, man. Are, what do you mean well, are you, false are you, binary? Are you, are, what are you suggesting? Get are you violent? advocating for non for not voting? Is that the what? What do no. you what do you? I guess are you advocating for? To, so I can understand. Well, I my point is that thinking that Trump's going to win is like a fantasy. Then you know what you're saying. Do you know what you are saying? I'm to this saying country? that I don't trust the way that the votes are tallied in this country. You are saying they will not allow a peaceful revolution. I do not Dude, believe they, that. they hijacked this country in 1913, Trump man. Trump won you... in 2016. Yeah, I, I remember that. He did. He can win again. Uh, they are terrified that he's going to win again. Yeah, he can win. I and just don't so think it's right likely. right now, it doesn't matter if it's likely or not, the only course of action is every legal method to secure votes for Donald Trump in the hopes he takes action towards weeding out deep state corruption cleaning up the doj so and what's even the further than that I, like <clears throat> I, something i would like to see that is a huge frustration for me because everybody's talking you know everybody's caught up in the conversation of whether or not the election was stolen what 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 really drives me crazy is that there's 
concrete evidence of uh, just different places where, you know, poll watchers are, are kicked out and, and there's there's actual fraud when it comes to ballot counting, all sorts of stuff. And none of those people have been held accountable. People making TikToks and all sorts of stuff like those people, like if their feet aren't being held to the fire, then what is the, like, Well, let's let's say this. There are there is a preponderance of evidence uh, of fraud occurring in several instances to the sure. degree we don't actually know because the courts never adjudicated them. Absolutely. There should be an, an inquiry and an adjudication. However, 100%. it's yeah. funny when, you know, uh, I, I don't think Trump lost because of like fake ballots or flipping votes and voting machines. I think that Democrats outright said what they did in the shadow campaign yeah. article for Time magazine, that they had mass ballot harvesting operations, that yes. governors changed the voting rules in violation of the Constitution. And then when the state legislature said, hey, we have a question about this, they said too bad. So it's a procedural question, not a fraud question. Do they allow ballot harvesting? And they did, when in many states it was legal and some states it was not. My point is only this. Conflict, crisis, and violence is not winning. Violence erupting in this country is a defeat of anybody. If anything ends up happening where a fight breaks out, every time a fight breaks out or violence breaks out between the left and the right, everyone's lost. When January 6th happened, Trump and, and everyone on the right took a strategic defeat. Even on the left, everybody lost that day. What a horrible misuse of justice. And politically, the right lost a tremendous deal. All we can say right now is, you are standing on a sheet of ice, and it may be difficult to cross, and it may be unlikely, but the only thing you can try and do is walk the, 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 the edge and try and make it to the other side. We are hoping that there is a path forward through legitimate legal electoral means, and it seems to be based on all the data coming out right now, that's the case. It appears that what they're doing by indicting Trump and his lawyers and arresting the J6ers and decreeing guns are illegal is a panicked, desperate attempt to create some kind of shock content where they can muster up something for 2024. Bud Light, Target, Sound of Freedom, Richmond, North of Richmond, the cultural victories are in the billions. Yeah, man. Private sector. That's where it's at. But that is reflected in the electorate with Joe Biden's numbers on the decline and collapsing. You do not get $30 billion lost on Bud Light and no re reflection in politics. Of course, the people who stop drinking Bud Light are voting for Trump. There's, 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 look, if you come to me and said, here's a guy who boycotted Bud Light over the Dylan Mulvaney thing. Do you think he's voting for Trump? In no circumstance would I ever make a bet that person would vote against Trump. But if you look at the massive moves that were made against Target, Disney, Netflix, Bud Light, all of this is indicative of a populist, massive populist movement being successful. And the reason Republicans lose in 2020, they didn't do as well in, in the Congress, and they didn't do, uh, and they win the presidency, is because the Democrats procedurally outplayed them. Mm -hmm. Universal mail-in voting, What do you think about unquestionable. Uh, uh, the 2022 election, though? The, the congressional it's, election. The Republicans did not ballot harvest. They did not engage with, with how the Democrats were handling because universal mail-in voting. That was something that, that Trump did really well, objectively, in 2016, was the way that they targeted, like, you know, uh, mail-in voting and early voting and all sorts of stuff. That, that, was, that was a real shift for the Republican Party, is to, to focus on that in the campaign. It and is, they didn't do it I, in 2020, which is mind-blowing. I think it's like four to one, Democrat ground activism versus Republican ground activism. Yeah. Then you add in the fact that Democrats live next to each other, and in suburbs, you have houses lined up, whereas in rural areas where conservatives live, the houses are far apart. Yes. Meaning two Democrats can hit 100 houses in an hour, and two Republicans can hit 15. That is the advantage of the Democrats in creating universal mail-in voting. It was a procedural shift. It was the bulk of how they pulled it off. And Trump only needs 42,000 in these key states. So why are they indicting him in Georgia? They are panicked and desperate and need to get his name off the ballot because they can't win. So everyone needs to recognize that. The one thing they're hoping for, why are they decreeing guns illegal? They are desperately hoping that someone gets violent. About that, the real quick on the guns being the declaring guns illegal they used a public health announcement mm. and 
that was the i think that uh, something that occurred to me oh, that's yeah. the same justification they used for violating everybody's rights over covid of course so now the precedent so the 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 covid stuff has now become precedent to violate your rights we saw whatever. this coming yeah i yeah. mean we, it is but it, now we now we're seeing it actually start to material because you, you could really see where that was the where the excitement yep. was building they're like oh wow these people will just roll over and let us do anything as long as we call it a public health crisis yep. As long as we say it's good the for Germans, you. the Nazis did that too. They were big on eugenics, group exercise, warning against alcohol and tobacco. It was a lot about public health. I don't know how how e deeply they took that. Even the Nazi verbiage, uh, when they were talking about you know Jewish people or whatever, like that, they were they were talking about it as like a plague, an epidemic. And like they used a lot of just the way that they talked about it, their dictionary in that way was very reflective of a public health incident. Yeah, when they start calling people elements or like dangerous elements. Yep. Yeah. And the, and that's already happening to conservatives now. You know, the, the, the way that they have... Now, again, people are going to go freak out and be like, oh, Phil's making comparisons to World War II and blah, blah, blah. And that's not my point. But because it's not just World War II. There's all kinds of places where you have one group of people demonizing another people in order to get the, the population more broadly to hate on the the people they're demonizing so you can apply it to world war ii but you can also apply it to a bunch of other contexts throughout history it's not exclusively something that's happened uh you know in world war ii but it works you you had hillary clinton uh you know <coughs> declaring all of the trump supporters throwing him into the basket of deplorables and since then and, I, and it was probably it was starting beforehand but since then like when she made that comment that's really when it started to coalesce that People that were outside of the Democrat establishment that were acceptable, that had the acceptable opinions. If you're outside of that, then you are outside of of our democracy and you are to be ignored and marginalized as much as they want. And now they're using the government to clamp down on people for having the wrong political Which opinions. Which is something I think Trump did better than anybody else. Like the deplorable thing and mm, everything. Yeah. Like he takes, like his mugshot, for example. Yep. He takes something that they think is going to be a gotcha, something that they try to use against him, and he just twists it masterfully. Like the man is a marketer. Didn't they do a, a an event called the Deplorable? I was there. I think they, yeah. People danced and stuff. <laughs> what was it? No, it was like, uh, it was a, at the press club in D.C. And so you walked around eating hors d'oeuvres, talking to people. Yeah, master of marketing. And uh, Cassandra made uh i think little keck frog <laughs> statues to give away or something like that it was it was Adorable. it was and antifa stood outside throwing uh, uh rocks and bottles at random people you should do that stuff and gavin mcginnis licked one of their faces you should do that not in <laughs> dc you should do it in a place where you can carry guns well you, the thing about dc is that if you're a far left terrorist who's violently attacking you know old old conservatives who are going to a a, a building for a private event the police won't stop you yeah the police did not arrest. As far as I know, none of these people got arrested for physically attacking people. The police don't arrest, arrest leftists that are doing stuff to conservatives. If the leftists are doing stuff to like police or if they're making a, a noise, you might get arrested. But if you're leftists attacking the right, they don't arrest you. I mean, the entire summer of love. 100%. Like, you, you look at these people, like these Antifa people that are throwing essentially makeshift bombs. IED, th something that would be registered as a destructive device in any other context. Yeah. Throwing them at you know, government buildings, and then the next day their bail is paid, and then nothing ever happens. That's with it. that point that you just made. That would be a destructive device. That's in ten years in prison. Literally any other context, every single thing that they were throwing at the the federal building in any of the other context would have to get an NFA approval. You'd have to go ahead and have fingerprints and your uh, your uh, passport photo taken, and. Then you have to be registered with the federal government, and they were throwing them, and it's a two hundred dollar tax stamp. You, 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 ten years for God, that's ten years and quarter million dollar fine. And, and I do know for a fact because I was there for some of it during some of the riots. There were ATF on the ground. They're investigating some of that stuff. Nothing ever came of it. Of course not, because it, it wasn't politically, you know, because they had they to get for. the braces. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. The braces were the real problem. The it braces just, were the running Molotov around. Molotov cocktails being yeah. thrown into 250-year-old buildings. It, it was wasn't the literal communist revolutionaries that were throwing Molotov cocktails and firebombs at the federal building. You had to get the braces because... If know. that had been handled properly, would it have been like the executive Trump, the president, would have issued like National Guard? I mean, or the state would have had like National Guard if they're, if they're firebombing or attacking a federal building? What was the federal no, police was, when they went out there? It, well, because they, they were there. Was it, it, was the, it was the ATF. It was the ATF. Yeah, the ATF was there. In, like, in, that in is, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Portland? 
Wherever the federal building was. Yeah, I think it was. A it was a, it was an amalgam of federal uh, law enforcement agencies. So you had ICE, you had CBP, you had uh, FPS. Even in the local ones, like where I was at at the time in Fayetteville, uh, they, they had uh, there was Molotov cocktail that was thrown into uh, the market house there, like downtown, because I think that was where uh, George Floyd's family was from, if I'm not mistaken. It's an old building from the 1700s. And uh, ATF was there the next day investigating. I think nothing ever came of it. And technically, that is something that is supposed to be an NFA registered item. But of course, nothing ever comes of it because that's not politically prudent. Mm -hmm. I think that the uh, the left wants the conflict so they can use it as a pretext for removing the Constitution. Mm -hmm. That uh, there are there are people on the left that do. I don't I don't know. I'm not going to say that it's the, the your average Democrat. I think your average Democrat is oh. actually a, uh, a, a useful idiot. The banality of evil. Yeah, they're helping because they're idiots and because they don't pay attention but yes there is definitely i mean there there is a we're in the middle of a cultural revolution right now these yeah. fights that we're having this the culture war that we're having it is a cultural revolution you can't say that we are in a culture war but say no we're not in a cultural revolution because there's the same thing yeah they earlier rock. uh when brianna Wu was on the culture war she said that what's happening with the j6ers holistically is the right direction Oh, and I said, go. the Proud Boys got two decades. Is that is that justified? And her position was, I did not look at those specific stories, but I think generally it's good. And I said, that is the banality of evil. The question of how do, how do evil acts become commonplace? Because the average person just assumes it's fine or it's the right thing without looking at the individuals who are, who are having their rights violated. There is no circumstance in any sane person's mind where you knock over a temporary barricade and you get 20 or you get 19 and a half years in prison. There is no circumstance in a sane person's mind where you uh, aren't even there and they give you 22 years. Only people who did not pay attention to these cases and don't care or are tribally satisfied by destroying the lives of, of other people would want these things to be the case. I'll take it a step further. There's people that I know that I've talked to that uh, think that even just being there, because I've, I've talked about a couple of cases that I knew of just, you know, uh, allegorically that were not even in the Capitol. They didn't even get into the Capitol, but they were just there at what later became the January 6th that they're trying to turn into the next 9-11 uh, that were then investigated by the FBI and, and, and were given a temporary ban from D.C. and a bunch of other stuff. And people have argued in favor of that. They're like, yeah, well, they were there. They, right. they, they should have known what that would become. And, what, and I'm over here thinking, like, you are literally there to listen to the then sitting president of the United States speak. Well, there, there are people who got uh, but they, they, fired they from their jobs simply because yeah. they were in D.C. on January 6th, nowhere near the Capitol. Well, what's crazy is that that even even if you were there, even if you were listening to Trump speak there, who was, you know. Well, but, but let's clarify, Trump was not speaking at the Capitol. Right, right. No, 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 not at the Capitol, but they're, but they're in D.C. The, at, at a protest. That is literally the First Amendment, is your right to peaceably assemble. Yep. That is the First Amendment in the Bill of Rights. Like that is that is a very constitutionally protected action. And people are advocating, well, well, they should have known. Yeah, I, I, I fully believe that they should have been targeted for that. Like that blows my mind that people are even making that argument. Yeah, there, there are people who lost their jobs because they were at the Ellipse listening to Trump speak and then went home. And yeah. then people were like, whoa, you were in D.C. during January 6th. Don't know, don't care. So there are a lot of people who are in D.C. on that date who did not go anywhere near the Capitol, who have had social repercussions just for that. It just seems to me, I don't know, man, there's no, there's no logical argument against this getting worse. And it's an unfortunate thing. I would much prefer to just play Magic the Gathering all day, play poker all day, then go skateboarding, play some music, and not be involved in anything like this. It'd be much better if I if I did one video per day where I was like, here are the new polling numbers. Donald Trump wants to increase taxes on imports. Ooh. Last night I Everyone thought... chills. But instead... I was going to message you and be like, I just said, figure I'd tell you in person. If we win the culture war, it's going to happen in Baldur's Gate. You mean like, we're going to win a video game, but the rest of the world just burns? Well, what, what I meant was, we'll be <laughs> streaming online, we'll have 100 million people watching or something like that. Like 10 million people will watch us stream a video game and, and like see the humanity in us. And like, then the politics will become evident and obvious. If they like you, they, they believe you. Yeah, the problem I is... Like I disagree. There are people like, you're not, we're, there's never going to be a degree of influence like that again. Uh, because of the way the internet operates. I don't yeah. know, you got guys like Elon, you got... I don't know. In fact, 
you may be right, but in a way, you kind of it might be greater than it ever has been in the history of humanity. The way that one human can rally the rest with the internet. I don't necessarily know if it's one human, but I do like the idea that now you have the entire information gathering source is open source uh, for the first time. So you're not uh, relying on Walter Cronkite for what America believes. It's it's very uh, well distributed now. So like there there is a chance like that, but I don't I don't think it's going to be one person. But yeah, it would be it wouldn't be one individual. One person's always the tip of the spear, and then it's just a, but they're a result of their community. Yeah, and but really what that meant. It, the, the culture war will be won in Baldur's Gate is that if we continue to try and find a political solution to the military industrial complex, it will lead us down to failure. There's no, there's no political, there's no way to take power away. I mean, you, you need to inspire the masses. And I think that's done through cultural endeavor, scientific endeavor, TV shows, arts and entertainment. And then you get these six, nine year olds by the time they're 20, they're ready to make something great. They already know they've been thinking about it their whole lives and they know how to do it. Do you, do you need to inspire the masses or do you need to inspire the 5% of people on the fence that aren't doing it's, anything? It, it's fractal. So you only need to inspire yeah. a small amount that then will inspire small amounts that will inspire small amounts that like it fractals out. So you as an individual probably only need to inspire about 100,000 people, maybe 80,000 people. Probably the best case I've ever seen for that was Ron Paul. Like the, the ramifications of what Ron Paul did. Thank you. We Ron have Paul created a generation of, uh, of populists of libertarian populist types. I look at so many of the people who today we talk with who come on the show and they're all like, whatever their political views are, they're like, oh, I used to watch a lot of Ron Paul. Hmm. That movement back in 2008 was more influential. I, 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 I bet you've got a uniparty Democrats and Republicans sitting around a room being like, if we just had a time machine, we'd go back and we would not let Ron Paul anywhere near the presidential election. <laughs> Him and um, Dennis Kucinich was was pretty cool. He was good too. Yeah, he was very good. And Mike Gravel, I thought those guys were. They were and then uh, you ended up with only a few years later, after Obama, the left and right wing populist uprising for which Bernie is too weak to maintain and caved, and Donald Trump who kicked the doors in. And the corporations Bernie's. are like, let's profit, and the CCP is like, let's control, let's manipulate, create TikTok, spam their children. It's fascinating to me. One of the one of the converse, uh, one of the uh, uh, talking points that we had earlier with the culture war was, I was asked if I thought the intelligence agencies should be destroyed, and I mm -hmm. said that like almost all of them should be fired in government. There needs to become some, some kind of like civilian oversight audit of all of these systems and a termination and a restructuring. You know, because I, I am not the anarchist libertarian. Shut it all down overnight, just ban everything. I know Thomas Massey is like no more DOE. I'm more like, you know, audit termination or maybe even immediate termination then audit and then assessment and restructuring or, or dismissal but uh I, I can't think of a better formula for rot in dc no oh, yeah than a federal agency that by definition cannot expose its dealings to the public that just seems like a breeding ground for really bad stuff but i, I said that the intelligent ag intelligence agencies were abject evil yeah. and i was like i don't understand how anyone especially on the left or democrat after everything they've done, and we know they've done, would sit here and be like, no, they're good and necessary. The NSA, well, we know all about the, the Clapper lying to Congress and the mass spying they're doing. The FBI, should we bring up Martin Luther King Jr.? Yeah. But the interesting thing is, what we're told by the left is, climate change is bad, the oceans have, acidi have acidified, the trees are being torn down, the world is on fire, and it is the fault of us and these corporations by the way, they're being propped up by the U.S. intelligence apparatus going to war around the world to maintain the petrodollar. And then I have people come in here and say, but they're doing good work. And I'm like, not by your own logic. If you want all of these bad things, to, if you think America is bad, fundamentally racist, mass polluting, and needs to stop, well, then why would you agree with the intelligence apparatus maintaining all of these things by like, you know, why would you agree with the U.S. military securing oil in Syria with, with soldiers? You'd be like, oil's bad. Stop sending our soldiers overseas to guard it. But they don't. They have this, it's a contradictory worldview of we, we like the war in Ukraine for, for gas and oil. And we like international conflict, but we'll pretend sometimes that we don't. Uh, it's like conflict resolution. I think that's part of the psyche of the human is desire to overcome some sort of conflict, like build self-esteem. I find it in video games, you know, probably people find it with their kids. Probably. I don't have kids, but like, what do you, how do you find your conflict resolution? Working out helps me too. Sounds like you're talking about the power principle that, that, uh, 
Uncle Ted was talking about. Ted Kaczynski? Yeah. No, what is it? Do you ever read? You ever read? Negative. You ever read the manifesto? So I, he, I actually, I, real, real quick, before yeah, yeah, on that, ahead, I, I was I was shocked at the lack of, uh, I guess inspiration that his death led to. I, I immediately yeah. saw him like, oh, Ted Kaczynski died. I'm like, and that's very public. Like, that's going to lead to a massive rise in people reading that book and realizing, yeah, Uncle Teddy K had some points. You know. The, the, I know. That's that's the scary thing is uh, Sticks, Hexen, ha, Sticks Hexenhammer made a really great point a while ago. We were on a panel. Uh, someone tried quoting some, like, white nationalist guy. And then uh, my response was, why, you know, why are you bringing up a white nationalist in the conversation and his, his views? And then Sticks said, yeah, the guy's got bad views, but let's not discount an accurate quote because a bad person said it. And I'm like, oh, I completely agree with that. I just, my view was kind of like, I think that person's trying to goad us into jumping into their, you know, conversation about Israel. But Sticks made a really great point in that a lot of really bad people said a lot of really important things. You know what I mean? And it's like, it, it, like Hitler, Hitler liked dogs. You know what I mean? If, yeah, if, yeah. if, if you, you, you need to make sure that you're discarding and challenging all of the really dark and evil things but you don't immediately assume everything is always going to be dark and evil because then we'd all be like liking dogs is bad because it makes you like Hitler. Well, same thing with good people like Martin Luther King was a womanizer, but you don't don't shred his meaningful message because he slept around and cheated on his wife. We'll it, tell yeah. that to the FBI. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's jump into this story from the Post Millennial. Rich women of The View want illegal immigrants in New York resettled elsewhere. Uh, what? No, 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 no. This is a sanctuary city, okay? But frankly, you know, I think we need to find, and, and we've dealt with this before. I, I lived in, uh, in Miami. I was a migrant, an immigrant in Miami in the 80s. You'll remember when we had the Marielle boat lift. Yes. 125,000 Cubans yeah. came in a matter of six months. It puts tremendous stress on, on, on a city, on a community, on the social services. They need to be resettled elsewhere. They need, right? to, they need to be out. We're this spread, massive yeah. country. Well, yeah. And it's only going to get worse with global warming and climate oh, change. Oh, I love this. <laughs> <people>. <laughs> Can't live in this okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause right there, Joy Behar, and um, I don't know the other lady's name. No, you're a sanctuary city. You voted for it. Uh, New York is a sanctuary city. We should keep sending more. In fact, I, I hereby call on all border states to send as many people as possible to New York City. They absolutely should. Well, it, there, there are a lot of places, especially like New York, and these people will vote for stuff because they're so isolated from it. Like, they, they're not there. They're not on the border. Like, oh, yeah. You know, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, they have to see it every day because that is where the flood is coming. Yeah. And they're they're over there two and a half thousand miles away. Like, oh, this is fine. Oh, we should be a sanctuary city. I'm like, that's really nice. You don't have to deal with it. It's you not your problem. You're disgusting. And that's why they, that's why they can, af can have those opinions because it's not real to them. It's an abstraction that they don't yeah. have to worry about that n doesn't touch them. Now that, that's why Eric Adams is all, oh, we're always going to be a sanctuary city because the number of actual illegal immigrants that they were getting because of their geographic location was totally manageable. As soon as you change the situation and start launching people into New York City, all that of that bravado about worse sanctuary cities, that stuff's out the window. Because in reality, these policies that they swear up and down that they want to have don't effing work. Period. Just don't work. Like you have re you have bumped into reality, and when your ideology bumps into reality. Friggin' reality wins every friggin' time. You are on the border. You live on the border. Uh, oh. My house is probably as a crow flies, like maybe two and a half, three hours from the the Mexican border. <clears throat> two and a half, three hours. Do yeah. you spend the? So you're running for the House uh, representatives for the twenty third yes. district. Uh, yeah, TX uh, CD twenty three. Wait, what's the border situation like in your district? Oh, it's 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 atrocious. Like it's it's so us. Uh, the Texas District 23, I, I liken it to like a dual-sided wrench, right? It's like the western side of San Antonio uh, to the eastern side of El Paso. So it has more border frontage in that district than any district in the country. And it's, it's just insane. You see a lot of these border towns and whatnot are dealing with this problem every day. And you have the, the, <laughs> the, the class of rich liberal intellectuals that can postulate about these things, but they don't have to see it. They're isolated from it. So they... they they, they get to have these, you know, fantastical opinions about, oh, this is what, the way we should be treating them. And, oh, I can't believe you do that. But they're not seeing the fact that, and now a statistically uh, important percentage of the U.S. population in the last five years, the increase in the U.S. population has come from illegal immigrants crossing the southern border. You know what the number is? 
Uh, I I heard the 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 term five million or the, the the figure five million the other day in the last uh, I think since Biden took office I'm not sure if that's correct I imagine that so many of them are undocumented yeah the, uh, five million that are document that are aware the people are aware of so like is the because there's no that, real way to know is the yeah thing. what's the sentiment of the people in the 23rd district like oh uh, from especially not only just from common sense but from all the polling that we're doing is like the the immigration issue is the number one issue in the district. These people are fed up with it, and they're fed up with the way that politicians are, are handling it. How would you protect the district? What would you do different? I so I, I like a lot of like Chip Roy's stuff, some of the stuff he's put up, which like Tony has actively worked against Tony Gonzalez, the the incumbent Republican I'm running against, because uh, he's it, it's 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 basically just a, a trying to shut down the border entirely. Which what, is what, what the guy is trying to do. That's what Chip Roy. Yeah, Chip Roy is actually I would say a really really good Republican. He's uh, he runs uh, the district that uh, Bernie, Texas, right down the road from me. Uh, that 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 district. Uh, he's he's got some really really good stuff. Like he's he's a very firm border guy. Shut it down. Like what would that? First of all, what does it even look like? Is it just flat? People could just walk across a sidewalk, or is it a river? It depends. There's there's well there's there's a river there. That that that's a lot of the the viral footage that's gone you know around the internet lately, where they had the the buoys with the the quote unquote saw blades in the middle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Those yeah. Are they got to remove those now. Yeah, I think uh, there, there's there been a lot of moves by the Biden administration to act actively remove uh, border barricades and things like what were, that. Were those put up by locals? Uh, they were put up by the state, I believe. I believe. And it's like they were floating buoys with literal saw blades between the buoys it's, so it's people razor, swim it's through. It's razor wires. Yeah, right, I, yeah right. I, I looked at it. It's not it like, a, like a malicious looking saw blade. It looks like a piece of you know sheet metal that has a jagged edge there. It was cutting people and killing them or something? I, I don't think cross? It. No, but no, like, no, 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 no. It it's it's, it's, ob like it's obstructing U.S. waterways. That's why they have to remove it. Okay. So That's what, it. When you say shutting down, what would a shutting down of the border look like? Because I feel like it's not... Like, what does that mean exactly? Well, there's a lot of Border Patrol folks, especially, that are tasked with managing that section of the border that aren't given the equipment and anything that they, they need. So that, that they're purposely being, uh, I guess, suppressed in that way. There's By a the lot of frustration and a lot so, of uh, folks. Is the headline, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> headline from the New York Daily News. Two bodies found stuck in Rio Grande floating barrier along U.S.-Mexico border, according to Mexican officials. Yeah. yeah. If you didn't know saw blades were in there, you could, might try and swim and climb over it. But I don't know if there's saw blades in there. Uh, I, I don't think the, the saw blades were the reason why they died. Yeah, you, it, you, it's what's, uh, something that's also not really talked about very often is that uh, finding dead migrants is just a thing that happens in that the part time. of Texas all the time. Like There's a, there's a ranch down the road in, in Uvalde that we go to a lot uh, that... Uh, has had issues with that where like there are literally dead migrants will wash up and they just find them it, and that's that's a good uh, two hours in from the border I feel like historically it's been the most when when countries have had to deal with mass mass migration like against their will that it's been the most gruesome defensive measures have been taken and they just don't document it because like otherwise or you hear about the roman empire getting overthrown by the immigration oh, and, and let me be let me be really clear this is not like u.s defensive border policy that's killing them it's it's just the elements if you've ever tried to walk anywhere in texas with limited provisions for days at a time that is a very very deadly venture if you're not Dude, careful walk a mile like today outside <laughs> here never mind degrees. through the desert in back texas. What, texas is like over 100 for the entire time i was there yeah what I, the the entire last week i was just back in in, in san antonio it's like 107 yeah. degrees is kind of the normal in the middle of the day yeah. what would be an example of u.s defensive measures that a they're wall <laughs> a wall is, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you can call the wall what you will, but a lot of Democrats said that the wall was just a massive waste of money. So it, some of the lower estimates were like single digit billion dollars, like $8 billion, but we can give hundreds of billions to Ukraine. Yeah, that's money that they need to send to Pakistan to teach kids about gender studies. Right, right. So it's like that, that's a, that's a good, you know, that's a good starting place. And also giving the, the border patrol folks the, the equipment and the things that they need to actually do their job. Like what? What equipment? Uh, whether it's, you know, uh, just a the ability to staff the people that they need like the the people they, they need to actually work the border uh vehicles access to resources like and the states are willing to do that but the federal government isn't oh the federal government are they withholding federal funds from the the process or are they actually legally impeding state defense I'm not sure if they've legally impeded state they, defense they, they, they're they're like doing a lot like a lot of stuff like this I've seen there was one example I, I think it was the uh 
it was the the countermeasure that they put up in the water was they were told to to remove but there was another one i think it was like in arizona or new mexico that they were yeah. told to take shipping the shipping containers down. yeah yeah the shipping yeah. container thank you yeah. Yeah, yeah they blocked off waterways with shipping containers nope just flat ground yep uh-huh. and they made a makeshift walls and shipping containers and they're like ah you can't do that and they're like why and they're like mm, we don't know but you know Oh my god! Yeah, so it's like a state trying to protect their own border, and the federal government actively said, like, you know, and it's not a tax, it's not a, a taxpayer money thing because they, if if that were the case, they would just leave it there. But they said, no, you actively have to remove this now. Someone said it was on Twitter that the reason that they're allowing the federal government's allowing such mass migration is immigration is because uh, the birth rates are down and they need new slave labor, the tongue in cheek slave, they need new citizenry, hmm. and like unless we're going to have a bunch of kids. They're, the writing's on the wall, and they need a larger population. If they were that philanthropic about it, I think they would openly say it. Yeah, like we need more people, right? Which is not the argument that they're making. They're not. They're not that transparent. So I, there's there's obviously something else at, at work. What like a wall? What else? I mean, is there any? What, how can you prevent this this mass Im, illegal mass migration? Well, and on, there, well, there's a lot of a lot of things. Like I said, like giving excuse me, giving a like border patrol the the tools that they need to actually. Uh, do their jobs. A wall is a good start, but really, I, like a lot, a lot of the things that I think that would help are, uh, you know, just the the removal of a lot of the entitlements too. Because mm. it's like if you remove entitlements, a, a lot of that desire to migrate goes away. Like you've yeah. actually seen too, and it's it's a it's an actual uh, observable effect. The way that the U.S. economy fluctuates has effect on uh, illegal immigration from Mexico, yeah. Yeah. which is a really interesting stat. The, the, you, you talk about that. That's one of the things that like libertarians like a lot. Like so, there's a lot of open borders libertarians that don't, they're kind of like you know people don't you know countries shouldn't exist. You you should just be able to move freely where you want and stuff. The only kind of borders that there should be are property uh, borders for property rights. If you have a, if you have property, you can say people can come onto it, but you can't. States shouldn't be able to do that and stuff. And to me, it's compelling in the idea that like people should be free right like that's genuinely that's what my gut instinct is but you can't have an open border and be giving away the type of entitlements that we do here in the US you know when you've got social security unemployment all kinds of all kinds of uh, social programs that are that are available to people that come to the US that that come to the US or that are that are citizens of the US if you get rid of the entitlements then you can have open borders because the situation is if you want to come here and work come work even just listen but, to the conversation that they're having about in, in new york and where they're, they're getting a lot of these migrants bust in the conversations they're having is like how do we logistically how do we feed these people how do we clothe these people how do we put them into homes how do we wash their clothes like how do we do all these things how do we teach their children it's like these are all just strains on the economic system i have that an idea thrown into you don't you don't because <laughs> they're here illegally and they shouldn't be here. Send them home. You got to go back. I mean, go home. You know, huge deportation. You, you support that? Now, hold on. It depends on what you're talking I, about. I, I propose a program where when people come to the border, we ask them, what country are you coming from? And we ask them a few, we have a questionnaire about their country and our country. And they're allowed to stay because at the same time, Communist leftists are lining up on the other side of the border, and we do a one-for-one swap with the <laughs> anti-communist Venezuelans and Cubans for the communist hipster Brooklynites. And I think we can all agree that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a that's like a, what you, they, people would do with like prisoners of war. They call it repopulation, where they would just take a huge section well, not, of their populace it, and swap move them? it somewhere. Well, against, saying, if saying, it's against their will, otherwise you know, you're, you're totally at the cool. southern border. And there's a line of people and a guy walks up and it's like, where are you from? He's like, Venezuela. And it's like, okay, and uh, your views on socialism? It's really bad. I want to go to America. It's like, okay, and you, sir? Uh, you're, where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn. And you look communism? I do. Swap. We're good. We, let, just, let we all... just don't accept them back. Oh, you can't come yeah. back? No, you're gone. No, no take back, <laughs> you go. You go to Venezuela. <laughs> you go to Cuba. You go to, you go to communism land like you dreamed of. So like it, Social Security goes to... Illegal immigrants at the at the moment. I don't. I really don't know what what kind of entitlements these people are getting at the moment. I don't. Um, I don't well, think it's social security. But think about what you can get without an ID. Yeah, and there's a lot. And so uh, you can you can actually get an ID without uh, yes. proper documentation. And then once you have an ID, you can apply for literally anything. People people don't understand that uh, our system of you know welfare 
it's it's not like everything's integrated perfectly and they know exactly who everyone is all the time. It's not like this gigantic mainframe has your face, your social, your Facebook profile, and then when you apply, they're like, it all makes sense. Now, when you go to one agency, they're like, probably. That's why a lot of people who are not citizens get driver's licenses and they get registered to vote. There was an old lady who voted being, not being a citizen because they uh, she got her license. They automatically registered, registered her. She did not know she wasn't allowed to do it or whatever. It doesn't matter. And they were like, that's a felony. You're going to prison. You're not a citizen. You can't vote. But it's like, that's how, that's how it works. And thank God there is no over overarching you know, entity that has all this information. Because could you imagine how scary the federal government would be if they were competent? It was just AI being like, you said 19 years ago, the way your eyes well, shifted that's when this was said indicates that you are not trustworthy. Um, yeah, they, I've heard that the Department of Education is a total mess. That the, the loan programs, who owes what, it's just a, no one has any idea what's going on. People, all paperwork's lost and misplaced. I don't know. The I, Department I of Education gives out loans? Uh, in, uh, in conjunction with like, yeah. I don't know anything about that, but I agree that the Department of Education is a mess. They and took we should on just a get bunch of stuff. It. They've been spending more money every year since their inception in 1979. Grade scores have been going down every year since their inception in 1979. The idea that people couldn't be educated before the Department of Education is actually ridiculous. All of the important discoveries in the 21st century were made pre-1970, or in the 20th century, my bad, in pre-1979. Like, split the atom, design nuclear power plants, blah, 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 blah. All this stuff happened before the Department of Education. We will be fine without the freaking Department of Education. <laughs> I, this, I tend to lean on that. It's infuriating. People say that, oh, we're going to have people that aren't educated, blah, blah, blah. Newton wrote the Principia. He figured out how gravity freaking works and the math to describe it without the Department of Education. I, I tend to lean on the side of, you know, government, no matter what it's doing, is the black thumb of industry. 100%. Nothing will be better because the government runs it. It's like, should we take care of our veterans? Absolutely. That's a fantastic thing to do. Should we create a government program to do it? That's, that's where you get the VA and that the absolute cluster that that is i don't know anybody that says they they think the va is really really good no there's there's people that kill themselves in the va regularly there's people that kill themselves in the va parking lot yeah no like literally i mean yeah, yeah like in the lobby yeah, yeah that's that is a thing that happens regularly and we don't talk about it. so like privatizing an aspect of that you think could be a good business opportunity uh not even a business opportunity but like just like uh, it's it, we, I think at a certain point, should look at the obligations that we have to our veterans and realize, like, okay, yeah. is there a private sector solution to this that doesn't end up like private prisons? You know, interesting. The, the, the thing about centralized power and authority is if it works, okay, I guess it's working. Decentralized might be better. But when it fails, the entire system fails. That's, the, that's yep. why. That's why. Even if you have a government program that works marginally or, or works even, I'll so say, say well, right? Even if you have a government program that works well, you had to risk the government program not working, being instituted, never going away because government programs don't go away. Look at the Patriot Act. Look at all the stuff that we still have that everybody talks about how much they hate. What was that? Mil I think it was Milton Friedman. There's nothing more permanent than a temporary oh, government yeah, program. Yeah, absolutely. But why don't we attach sunset clauses to all of the new, all new bills? I love this. Yeah. I love, Start love, there. love this. But asking them to attach sunset clauses is like asking them to vote for themselves to get a pay cut. Right. They just Never won't. Mm. So I like sunset clauses. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. no matter what the law is. Because no if it's what. a good law, everyone will be like, oh, okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, keep and, and a lot of programs would still maintain their funding. Like, uh, all in favor of funding the, you know, Department of Education, bang, no question, no questions asked. Yep. You know, all in favor, not, not funding, but reinstating the, 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 like, a lot of these programs would just stay. Some of them, people would be like, I have no idea what that program is. Like, there's laws that shouldn't be on the books that are on the books, and they just be like, we, we, we vote on that? Well, they never repeal laws. They just right. stop enforcing them, which is a terrible idea because that means the government still has that power, and then they can go ahead and say, oh, well, he did this thing, and you know what? There's this weird, uh, obscure law from 150 years ago, and we can blah, 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 and we can charge him with this. They were doing that. I forget the name you of the know, act, but they were doing that with, with Trump. What was it? The uh, Logan. The, the Logan Act, yeah. You know, you know what I really want to do? If I if, if if I was a cop in Florida, I would I would drive I would look up in, in my jurisdiction skydiving. I would ask them like where do you typically land like when you guys are coming down, and then as soon as the women 
land with their parachutes, I would arrest them on the spot. <laughs> on Sundays? <laughs> it is illegal for you to skydive on Sunday. And they'd be like, what? And I'd be like, here's the law. Bitches jail. That, that's your fault. <laughs> you go to jail. <clears throat> you go to Boston, they have laws. I, I, where it's like you can't put a pie on your window still on a Tuesday or something like that. Yeah, or, or it's, it's like Sunday. And the reason was back when, when everything was really small, putting a pie on the window cell could attract animals. And it was like a church gathering where no one was around so then a bear would wander in the town. So they're like, you guys got to stop putting pies on your window sills to cool. And so you show up, oh. you look around for someone who's got a pie near, because I don't think I was actually putting it on, but I'll look to that window and if I see a pie anywhere near that, I'm like, ma'am, you're under arrest. This is, uh, it looks like the law you were referencing in Florida was struck down. What? Uh, no, my law. Does Florida <laughs> this have is a law <laughs> in which unmarried women are not allowed to go parachuting on Sundays? And then it says, not anymore, and it's well, doubtful there ever was. This on. is from skeptics. I, I'm very curious why it was specifically unmarried women. <laughs> Florida? Oh, dude, dude. In West Virginia, apparently it was struck it's down. illegal to cohabitate unless you're married. So, like, you know what, man? We need reform in this country. Laws need to go away. Yeah. If you're going to enforce these laws against Trump, I want to see some cop be like, uh, excuse me, sir. I couldn't help but notice that woman with you is going into the same building. Do you both live here? We do. Uh, you're under arrest. You're not married, you're under arrest. Think Imagine about how, how much harder it is to be an attorney nowadays than it was in 1874. Just how many more laws just by volume oh, okay. are yeah. it's a, it's a, It was a fine anyway. Was and it because they didn't want to show their underwear or something? It's only <laughs> single women, no parachute. It was, it, was, it was a petty offense. So it's just, a, you get a ticket for it. Which is so weird. Dude, I love these crazy old <laughs> I, laws. I just love that this is after the plane, but before modern common sense. Oh, was it? Well, parachuting, specifically? Yeah, I don't know when the law was originated. Well, I just assume it had to be after the airplane. Right, because you can't <laughs> jump out right. of a plane with a parachute. And, I, I, and I do think that base jumping came after uh, planes because they had to invent the parachute. Yo, program. this one really, really irks me. It's illegal in Maryland to sell cars on Sunday. No. <laughs> a lot of states have that law. Really? And so... Is that still enforced? Yes. Like, uh, no. Kidding. They're all okay. shut down on Sundays. Yep. Hmm. So when we were, when we were, uh, we needed to guest, like a vehicle for, for, you know, guest uh, uh, pickup and stuff. When can I go? I do a morning show night show. I can't go during the, during the week. Just Saturday. Ah, but everyone closes early on Saturday. So it's like the only day I could go to buy a car is Saturday. And then on Sunday, it's like they're all closed. I think it's true in Virginia as well. Where do you, where's that law come from? Uh, church. Oh. Yep. Blue laws is what they're called. Blue laws. <laughs> yep. They had blue laws in Massachusetts for a long time. Stuff like you couldn't be, uh, couldn't have stores open on Sundays and stuff when I was growing up. But by the time I was a teenager, you know, like, they were all gone. Uh, they actually, I think they actually did repeal them. But I'm not 100% sure. Wow. Blue law is a legal restriction de designated for Sunday activity. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oklahoma, how you can't make faces at a dog. We got a listicle from BuzzFeed. <laughs> Illegal to eat a frog if it died during a frog jumping competition. Pardon? Illegal to sing in your <laughs> swimsuit. Oh, man, this is it. Florida, you go to Miami Beach, you, you put on Bohemian Rhapsody, oh. and then as soon as the people inevitably start singing, you go, ma'am, you're under arrest. You are under arrest. You don't sing. Too revealing. None of that. You can see their abs. You can't have a donkey sleeping in your bathtub after 7 p.m. No. In Arizona. Uh-oh. Bro, if I want my donkey in my bathtub, ain't no one telling me otherwise. Yeah, really. It's your Look donkey. at this one. Kansas, what? it's illegal to serve ice cream with cherry pie, on cherry pie. I remember this one. This one's like a very famous example of a weird law. And I, I don't know what the reason was. They don't know how I got on the books. <laughs> it's against the law to eat an orange while taking a bath. What the? Some of these just had to be. Legislature is just screwing with people, like a right? Quota to fill of laws. No, they're like, wouldn't this be funny? Won't people talk about this a hundred years from now? Yeah, I don't understand the or no orange in a bath. I don't. I mean, I know Florida is known for oranges. What? But it's illegal to eat fried chicken by any other means <laughs> than your hands. What? See, so with a fork, you can't do it. With a fork. Wow, that's funny. Here we go in Louisiana. A woman can't drive a car without her husband waving a flag in front of it. <laughs> That's why I've never gotten a record. Also, in Virginia as well. Only on Main Street, though. The husband has to walk in front of her waving a red flag. Wow. So, single women can't drive, period. See, this one's dumb. It's in Maine. It's illegal to bite your landlord. But Dude, it's, it's illegal everywhere to bite anyone. Yeah. <laughs> that's not. That's like, assault. Yeah, that's assault. <laughs> what is this that, law? 
You can't throw knives at men wearing striped suits. You can't throw knives at anyone. Come on. Even if they, but maybe it's if they, it's, if they're like, it's okay this time. You're like, it's no, a, it's still not. Just so you know. You can't it's like the once it. upon a time in Hollywood things. Like if I kill someone on accident, you know, these hands are deadly weapons. <laughs> vertical stripes like, cause an optical illusion, which messes with my. Wait, anybody <laughs> kills anyone on accident, it's manslaughter. Ooh, you can't you know? eat hamburgers on Sunday in Minnesota. I want that a has got to change. Wow. What a weird world. Can't eat cottage cheese on Sunday in Florida. <laughs> Don't tie a crocodile to a to an alligator, crocodile or an alligator to a fire hydrant. Well, okay then. <laughs> I can see that being a fire hazard. Like the uh, you can't uh, eat ice cream after six p.m. No, in New I mean, Jersey. Only purchase. You can't purchase purchase it. Yeah, but you can eat it. Well, there you go. Welcome to America. I have no idea how any of that is real. It's illegal to push a moose out of a moving airplane. You know that happened a, quite a bit in Alaska if they had to make it illegal. <laughs> How do you get a moose onto an airplane? Well, you just walk them on in the back. Cargo. Yeah. There's uh, also, this you guys is know specifically about... cargo planes they're pushing them out of. That's, that's cool. What's that, uh, what's that strip in um, Montana or is it Wyoming? The strip of death or whatever, the zone of death, where there's no, uh, there's no legal peers so you can't be criminally charged? I don't know. Oh, I've heard. I've Section heard of that. Of yeah, Yellowstone. Yeah. yeah, it's in Yellowstone. The show they use it as a prop. Montana, two hundred sixty square miles. No, 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 that's the park. Is two hundred sixty square miles. Yeah, there's a strip of land where no one lives, and so the Constitution requires a jury of your peers, but there's no one in this jurisdiction, so they can't actually convene it. And it's the silliest thing that people would argue. Technically, you could kill someone there, and you can't go to jail because there's no jury. And it's like, dude, if you get on a boat and go out to international waters and then kill someone. You will be charged with murder. It doesn't matter where you are. You can't just go and commit crimes and be like, ah, but I was in a special place. Nah. The zone of death is a 50 shot. square mile area in the Idaho section of Yellowstone National Park in which, as a result of a reported loophole in the Constitution of the United States, a person could theoretically avoid conviction for any major crime up to and including murder. I bet they'll still throw it Yeah, there has to jail. be an incident of somebody trying that. <laughs> well, let's see. What does Wikipedia say? No, there was a guy who killed like a bull moose or something, hmm. and then they, when they tried to criminally prosecute, criminally charge him for it, he said, "Oh yeah, I will challenge you on constitutional grounds." And then they came back and said, "If you do that, we'll give you the maximum. If you plead guilty, you'll get a slap on the wrist." So he plead, he pleaded guilty. Oh jeez, yeah. yeah. Which means they were not ready for that court fight. He'd probably win. Uh but I, I think at this point, the way things are going in this country, you can't expect the courts to actually operate. Yeah. What, um, when, we were, when we were dealing with a lawsuit, the first question the lawyer we talked to asked is, which state are you filing in? Because if you file in California, you lose. If you follow, file in West Virginia, you win, depending on what you're asking. If, you're filing a, if you are a leftist media publication in California and you file a lawsuit against a, a conservative, Republican, whatever, you win instantly. If you are a conservative in California, you file a lawsuit against a liberal, you lose instantly. West Virginia more likely for the conservative one for obvious reasons. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know, when I hear things like that from my lawyer, I'm, I, I just don't think this country's in a healthy place. But that's the reality. It's like the least unhealthy country. But that doesn't mean it's that's healthy. That's true, right. We're, 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 we actually do really, really well in a lot of ways, but it's falling apart. What's that quote? It's like, it's the d democracy is the worst system except for all the others. Yeah, yeah Winston yeah. Churchill. But we're not a yeah. democracy. You know, it's a right. constitutional republic. And it's actually the well, best. He was British, so, oh, you know. Ooh, hear that thunder. That was thunder? Thunder. Yeah. Sounds like it. How's the uh, campaign been so far? Really positive so far. It's been really nice. Uh, we're we're accomplishing our goal <clears throat> of uh, threatening the seat of a rhino. So that's that's always Whoa. a pleasure. What are your um, like tactics to campaign? I mean, obviously TV shows. Well, so we're doing really. Uh, it, it's it's been uh, a lot of just grassroots efforts. So we don't have a lot of the big. The, we don't have any any packs, any super packs, anything crazy like that. We've just been doing entirely grassroots and and really it's it's. It's kind of unconventional because this is the first time I think it's ever uh, anybody's ever utilized social media to the degree that we have for something like this. So a lot of it is uh, Twitter meme warfare, Instagram meme warfare, getting it kind of. You know, Tony Gonzalez is one of those politicians not a lot of people know about. You know, it, there's a lot of uh, P, uh, there's a lot of politicians, whether it's AOC or uh, Dan Crenshaw, people that are very polarizing figures. But that's only because people talk about them. There's a lot of people with worse voting records people don't know about, like Tony, because they completely slide under the radar. So bringing him into the public light and showing bad votes, like him voting for, for Biden's post-Uvalde gun control, you know, things like that, people don't know about it. What was his 
that vote, the post Uvalde gun control, what was that? Uh, it was a bill, it was like the Safer Communities Act, uh, which voted to fund, uh, I think it was a lot of mental health stuff and a lot of states' uh, red flag laws and, and a bunch of other things that, that came down uh, after the Uvalde school shooting that he not only voted for, but said he would, uh, he didn't regret voting for it, and he would vote for it twice, twice again on Sunday. Like a red flag laws, meaning if someone has some sort of psychiatric issue, they would come and threaten to take their weapons or something. Well, red flag laws are kind of their own uh, interesting issue because it depends. Monstrosity. Like, yeah, it, it varies state to state, but realistically, it's it's a way that people can you know whether it's your neighbor who doesn't like that your tree is too far over into his backyard, or it's your you know uh, ex wife who has a, a an axe to grind. People can just call and say like, hey, I think he might be doing something. You should go take his guns because I don't feel safe. And then the police will show up and do that. Is it happened? Yes. And there are incidents of people dying in shootouts because of it. So, I think one of them was in Maryland, if I'm not mistaken. I might be I might be wrong on that, but I think it happened. Recently? Uh, in the last couple of years. So this dude in Texas that you're running against that yes. vo voted for that stuff, did it actually go through? Yes, I believe it did. That's crazy. So, Can you uh, repeal that? Uh, if it's voted on, yeah. We, have a, we, had, a, we had a story... Elon suing uh, no. California. We'll just pull this one up. I mean, we're we're kind of it. We're, we're pushing into the super chat stuff, but this is uh, from the New York Times, and it's it's being it's, it was updated literally like seven minutes ago. New York Times says appeals court rules White House overstepped First Amendment on social media. A fifth circuit a Fifth Circuit panel partly upheld restrictions on the Biden administration's communications with online platforms about their content. Basically, they said that. Uh, the Biden administration violated the Constitution by telling social media companies to remove COVID misinformation. And, uh, I don't know, it's a good thing. That's a huge right? victory. Big victory. Right now, the uh, Elon Musk is, uh, acts is suing California under this law. And uh, uh, not this one, but under a law that basically would, would allow censorship and collusion and stuff. So, you know, how are you guys doing? We're doing pretty I good. I love debating this stuff, talking about COVID. Like, that's one of the biggest sadnesses of the 2021 is, like, I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to find out what was better, what was right, what was wrong, what was, like... And it's... I understand the fear of, like, you don't want to go on TV and tell 100 million people something that could get them killed. Like, I get that aspect of it, but debating it and discussing it and questioning it and I also understand, like, terrifying health emergencies thing. Oh, what if people are dying, actually bleeding out, you know, from flesh-eating bacteria? You don't want to tell them, you know, don't worry about it. You, but the terrifying nature, though, of having our Silicon Valley overlords say that they are the arbiters of truth and that discourse isn't allowed if they don't agree with it. That's that's its own yeah. separate issue. Yeah, and it should be. I think that the federal government has a, a duty to, to prevent that from happening personally sorry phil you no no it, the, the, the externalities are always the point or is, are always the problem like so the things that the government wants to do sometimes they're bad sometimes they don't look bad sometimes they actually aren't a bad plan but that doesn't mean that they can plan for all the externalities and it's all of the things that happen consequently because of a uh, because of a, a law that gets passed that tend to cause problems because people aren't prepared for them i mean it's like if you pass laws that don't pr solve the problem, then you've got new laws, you've got enforcement, you've got people losing their, their rights and stuff like that, and you still have the problem. So, and once a law is passed, again, we talked about it earlier, once a law is passed, it never gets repealed. Because of the incentive in government, you're never going to have a politician say, you know what, that law is bad. The law that I passed that law is bad and it's not working. We need to repeal it because my constituents are suffering. No, they're going to say, no, we need to do this and do more and blah, 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 blah. It's never, oh, this isn't working, we'll stop. It's, oh, it isn't working, throw more government at it. What's easier, oh, too, is to retcon it, which is what, that is an annoying trend yes, that I've realized. 100%. Where they retcon it, where they say, no, 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 we never forced anybody to get the vax. We never forced yeah, anybody to do that. It was, it was something, you know... You weren't legally required to. It's just that if you worked for the government in any capacity, whether you were uh, EMS, uh, a, a cop, any sort of position like that, we would just, you know, it was policy to fire you. But you weren't forced to. You had the choice. You could just, you know, quit your job, you know, two years before you, you, you retire. Like, it, it just that, that, that retconning of, you know, no, that, that's called forcing people to do it. Yeah. All right. We're going to sure go to Super Chats.
If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, and become a member over at TimCast.com by clicking join us at the website to support our work directly. And as a member, uh, your memberships are used to fund a whole array of, of kooky cultural endeavors. I think the crazy thing we're trying to do right now is create an anti Times Square. We're going to open a Cast Brew coffee shop, a Cousin T's diner, a Papa Jack, Papa Jack Pasobic's Pizza Shack. And uh, hopefully we can get a my pillow brick and mortar shop and then create this like block long downtown area in West Virginia of all of these businesses. That 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 is I got my eyes set on that. I think we can do it. All it takes is we go one step at a time. So I'm excited for that. But that's that's basically what we do when you become a member. That's what we're focused on. All right. We're going to read your super chats. I'm going to start with this one. It's uh, from a little later on, but I want to read it. Uh, the R heretic with his grossly incorrect assessment said, Watching Tim eat his words on the Second Amendment after his naive counter to yesterday's guest from Venezuela about America's expanding gun rights in real time is worth $20, even if he doesn't read this super chat as usual. Except I was still 100% correct in everything I said. So, uh, guest basically said, we're losing our gun rights, and that's actually not true. Yeah, with we, the expansion of constitutional carry and a bunch of stuff on the state level, like, oh, we yeah. do it really well. Half the country is now constitutional carry. There's no question. The only reason the New, the New Mexico governor can make this decree is because New Mexico went from no issue to shall issue. And now that it's a shall issue state, they have to allow people to get guns. And now they're trying to go back to how it was like in the 90s. And it's more than half. I think now it's like, uh, what, like 27 states? Uh, at least 26. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, there's 26 saying. listed, but it may be because one's pending. Yeah. But there's more than half the country where you don't need a permit. And see, your point is right. Um, and the the actual situation isn't that gun rights are contracting, like he said. It's that the government is overstepping its legal boundaries. The federal yeah, government right. isn't, a, isn't allowed to well, pass the, these the, laws. But it's the, the, right. Gun rights has been ex have been expanding tremendously. D.C. versus Heller was huge. And now we have constitutional carry across the board, half the country. And what happened in New Mexico today was panicked desperation from a despot who's issuing a decree that will get struck down by the Supreme Court in two seconds. And here's the best part. When it does, it will set precedent that executive orders can cannot infringe upon constitutional rights. It'll probably be a bit more narrow than that. And they'll say pretending to guns, but hopefully it's a bit more broad. And you can see even in specific instances like state constitutions, for example, where they're like, well, except for concealed carry, you know, different things like that, where there, there's even more careful verbiage when those clauses were added years ago than there is now. People are now opening up to things like uh, nationwide reciprocity and stuff yeah. like that, which is not a conversation that would have happened in the 90s. All right. We got RJ McDougall says, did I win? Yes, sir. You were the first super chatter. You beat. I'm not your buddy guy who said they only take away your guns because what they're about to do next would make you want to use them. That's what worries me. All right. Anthony Brownlee says, OMG, it's the AK God. I hope you win in Texas and bring down some of those damn gun restrictions to it for life. What, what inspires you to call your uh, the AK guy, your Twitter channel, the AK? The AK-50 you... that he has yet to deliver. The chat is going <laughs> nuts, by the way. I've seen so many people complaining about the fact of, that there's not been a legitimate Blame real AK. suppliers. <laughs> Blame bad American manufacturing is what it is. <laughs> no, we, we've got a big update coming on that soon. We, got, we actually just got our new receiver in yesterday, and nice. it looks totally functional. What, you say we? Who is we? Me and my team. So I, I've got a team of, uh, of miscreants that are helping me out with a lot of stuff in the shop, you know, whether it's design stuff or, uh, or manufacturing. For your company? Yes. What company? Uh, the AK Guy, Inc. So that, that's, uh, that's the name of the company now. But yeah. it used to be my YouTube handle back in the day when I was, you know, I was the, the weird AK Guy of the group because I always liked the AK platform. I always had a fascination with it. You guys manufacture weapons in general, just weaponry or uh, guns? Yes. Um, More specifically, the AK platform, but we do a lot of like, you know, uh, especially stuff for the YouTube channel to show off uh, like World War II machine guns, uh, different just firearms throughout history because I'm, I'm fascinated at the evolution of arms, you know, all the way back from the 1800s flintlocks all the way to, you know, the first machine gun, the first submachine gun, uh, you know, just the, the evolution of firearms has always been intriguing to me. Have you seen these guns that are being built with graphene, the new ones? Uh, in what, uh, which they, they just use them in the body. I just saw a 22 that was being created. I should have logged it and so, uh, told you about it, but they're lightweight. You see that guy over there? The yeah. big one, not the little one. Yeah. That's an actual, uh, Union Civil War rifled musket. Do you know where it was made? Uh, no, it's probably on there. I think it, might, it might be Springfield. Okay. Yeah. But, I was just curious because Harper's Ferry is pretty close. So I oh, figured right. like, you know, a Harper's but Ferry. But I, I don't think they made them. them here, did they? I think they did. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, then it may be. I got that at an antique store. They were, uh, so these are particularly common. There were 10,000 of them that were made 
and never used. They were just left in an armory. Uh, more importantly, the Union stopped, uh, started using breech-loading uh, rifles. Uh, uh, it's one of, the, one of the reasons the South lost Gettysburg mm. was that uh, Confederates were marching into Gettysburg with muzzle-loaded rifled muskets, and the Union had paper cartridge breech-loading rifles. It's, uh, Burnside mm. carbines, I think. Is that what they're called? I think so. Is that I'm correct? Break, have... break action. Breach load. Yep. You, like you pull the trigger guard down, it pops open. The mu the the chamber pops open. You throw it in. And I it's think crazy. I have a Burnside carbine. Yeah. Yeah. Those things are rad. I was at an antique store. Oh, yeah. They had uh, one of the early. I think it was an early Winchester where you load in the in the stock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah crazy. Yeah. Like how does it? And then uh, uh, I do love the side load. You know. So I've got uh, I've got a Winchester over there, and it's 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 awful. I'm sorry. It just yeah. it's, <laughs> it's super cool. It looks cool, but trying to load a 30 30. And the and the and the mag tube just jams every single time, yeah. and then I and, and when I when I deal with this, I'm like I must be doing something wrong. So I ask everybody, like, no, it sucks. And Dude, I'm like, okay. yeah, but mine's, a, mine's a Burnside. I just Google the to make Burnside sure. carbine is uh was the. It was invented by a Ambrose Burnside, yep. mm -hmm. the dude who, where sideburns come from. It I mean, get a most, picture of this guy. It was the most productive thing uh, Burnside ever did for the North because he was a terrible general. <laughs> he, he was a general and an inventor. Like, we need yeah. more military men that are inventors. That's what made this country so great in the beginning. Well, just like uh, Sir Hiram Maxim, uh, the guy who invented the Maxim machine gun. Like, gun. is a Maxim machine gun. That, that changed warfare. That changed the world forever. That moved Holy maps. Holy crap. He was, was an inventor. He invented a bunch of, bunch of stuff. He had the early... Uh, concepts for the helicopter. He actually invented the first real inhaler. And that was, uh, people basically called him a bit of a dork for it. And he's like, look, I invented something for the betterment of mankind. Watch me create a death machine. And that's what, I'll, uh, what people will know me for. And a hundred years later, it's a little crazy. That's exactly the, what the Burnside carbine was thirty eight dollars and fifty cents in 1861. <laughs> what so that? what? what is that by U.S. like? current dollars i'm not sure but now i looked it up when i when i got it from my uh dad um and at the time it was a couple thousand dollars for this for mine and mine's nice. not in perfect condition uh apparently today's prices are 34 times as high so 34 times higher that might be than 1861 i don't know if that's true or not it would be 1399 is that the, what you said yeah dude ambrose burnside wow. The, the firing range, a 200-yard shot for a for a, something like that is legit. For you know? bare iron sights? Yeah. That's, that's pretty decent. Yeah. They had some real, like, decent long-range stuff back in the day, like Kentucky rifles and stuff like that. The real, like, craftsman-made guns. Not necessarily the mass production sure, stuff. Sure. But the, the craftsman stuff, you could get some surprising distance out of that. Why? Right? What did they have that made them so good at? Uh, attention to detail, like especially when you're talking about early cutting of rifling and things like concentricity mattered a lot. Like, and that's that early machining. This is before electricity. So, yeah. like, if you ever go down to like Harper's Ferry and see how they made some of this stuff, it's really cool how they basically have it attached to a water mill, and that they have a belt system going through the ceiling and everything that's turning their lathes where they were cutting barrels and stuff. It's really neat. The the kind of archaic yeah, way I saw by that modern. One of that tour is really cool. Oh, did you? It's really yeah, neat. yeah. yeah. All right. Raybert G. Stanbert Jr. says, Tim, I don't understand how you maintained your composure this morning when Brianna invited you to promote voting as if you don't do it almost every day. That's literally the first thing I said to Tim when he came in today, or when I came in today. I was like, dude, how did you not kill yourself? But my, my view is uh, I, 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 I thought it was a good conversation. I operate under the assumption uh, typically that the people who are coming here from the left and liberals don't know a lot of new stuff. And that is not to, I'm not trying to insult them. They get insulted when I say that, but I'm like, I'm not trying to insult you. You told me you didn't read the news story. So I know there is a one-to-one -one chance. Okay, it's unfair, but like a 95% chance. We bring in someone who's liberal and ask them about Victor, Shokin, Burisma, Cutter, Turkey, Pipeline, etc. They're going to say, I don't know what that is. And I'm like, okay. Then how can you have an opinion on the impeachment of Trump if you don't know what happened in Ukraine with Victor, Shokin, and all this stuff? And then their response is, well, like, you know, I read enough about it. My attitude is like, by all means, come on the show and say exactly that. It's not for me. I don't need to hear it. Everyone watching hears it. And they take a clip of you saying, I did not read that story. I don't know. And that's all I need to hear. And then when next time you make an argument, we just attach that clip to it. And we say, these are people who take strong political positions without researching those stories. I was asked by Brianna about Casey Anthony and said, I have no idea. I did not. Re I don't know anything about that story. And I have no opinion. More than just not researching, what will happen is 
imagine if you're on the surface and there's a garden and you're like, where are the roots for all these plants? I must get to the bottom of this. And you dig down and you find the roots and you're like, I found it. I know the answer is now I'm satisfied. Trump impeachment, I get it. But then if you really dig deeper, which most people won't because they feel like they already found the roots, you go deeper, it opens up into a cave network where the roots continue to go deeper. And Trump's down there. And most people don't even know that cave network down. exists because they're already satisfied with this, this sh shitty garden thing like metaphor that i created like they've already feel like they got the answer every the, the mass media already fed them a little bit so they so, so they don't look deeper every, i'm not saying they every don't. single Some people do every single liberal i've talked to about the trump impeachment has outright said they did not know joe biden engaged in a quid pro quo and then another component of it and and i'm not trying to drag brianna i thought the conversation was really good it was three and a half hours it went very long uh when i'm when when we talk about uh hunter biden Hunter Biden, according to Devin Archer, testifies that Hunter was called that Hunter calls D.C. and says the prosecutor is a problem and we need help. Biden then flies out a few days later and engages in an illegal quid pro quo. It's a fact. And then brags about it. And then brags about it to CFR. And there's no legitimate response other than if, if you guys have seen that interview where the journalist is asked about Hunter Biden saying my dad takes my salary. And he goes, I don't know. And he's like, you're saying there's no evidence of corruption and we have proof Hunter said my dad is taking my money. And he goes, I don't know. It's well, like, he wasn't involved in his business deal. So this is what happens. He asked about the weather. They'll either say, I did not read the story. And then when you bring it up, they'll go, I don't know. It's like, well, okay. That's, I, I get it. I do not expect a Democrat to come in here and go, holy crap, he did that? Now that I didn't know. I expect them to dismiss it. And I expect that clip to be made and shared online to prove my point. And that's all I can do. I, I, there's no reason for me to get mad. I just say, okay, thank you for explaining. You don't care that Joe Biden did this. You don't think it's a problem. You're allowed to think those things. I am not mad at you for, for thinking Joe Biden should be allowed to engage in a quid pro quo. In fact, when I asked Brianna, does Donald Trump have the authority to threaten to withhold congressionally approved loan guarantees to a foreign president in exchange for a, a political favor? And Brianna would not answer. Why? Anyone who knows what actually happened knows that's what Joe Biden did. And so the, the political answer and the smart way to respond is to not answer that question because you get trapped because anyone would say, of course, Trump can't do that. I, I got you. Joe Biden did it. Unfortunately, Trump did the same thing. And they said, Trump's not allowed to do that. And I'm like, OK, but he was that's what Joe Biden did. No, no, no. Joe Biden was allowed to do it. OK, dude, whatever. I'm not mad about it. I know these people don't actually know or care. I just need to prove it to other people. I need to be able to give that clip to my liberal aunt, whoever, I don't actually don't have one, but my figuratively, and be like, there's the clip to watch. And they go, wait, what? And I'm like, if you choose to be on the side of, I don't care what's true, I care if my tribe wins, tell me now. But to anyone who's not interested, I can show you this clip and you'll go, oh, wow, I didn't realize Joe Biden did that. Okay, well, there you go, he did. Have a nice day. Anyway, let's read more. A lot of people saying, let's go, Brandon. We got uh, S.A. Federale saying, let's go, Brandon. A lot of people are saying, where's my AK-50? <laughs> what is the 50? Is, is that like a 50 BMG? 50? Yeah. yeah, so that, that's okay. a project we've been working on for a while. The, uh, it's basically just a 50 BMG AK. Can you do a, 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 a 9 millimeter Makarov carbine? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty easy. Because they... Uh, it's uh, just, it's just, what is it like a eight, is it 18, nine by 18, I think? Or is not, it? Yeah, nine, but nine by 18. Yeah. It's like the, the Russian, like, it's almost like a mixture between nine millimeter... Luger and 380? And 380, yeah. Yeah. It's, so uh, I also, I love the Makarov handgun too. Like, it's just. Which I, one though? Like the Makarov, like the Russian. Oh, right, right. I have a, I have a, I think it's called like a P64 or something. Yeah, I think that was Polish. Polish. Yeah. That's right. And it sucks. Yeah. Everyone hates it. Nobody wants to use it. It's ergonomic. Yeah. So it's only right-handed mm -hmm. and it bites. <clears throat> and so I, I, I had, I had gloves on in the winter. Yeah. At the range. And it still bites your hand. And I was really excited to have this Polish Soviet weapon, and it's just not fun. And I was like, does anybody else want to try? And they're like, we're we're good, we're good, because so we have like a Beretta, and we've you know nobody. The, wanted to do the P sixty four, they inexplicably, if I'm thinking about the right thing, if I'm thinking about it correctly, I think they inexplicably sh uh, shrunk it a bit, so it's not as it's big as small. a regular yeah. Makarov. Which a Makarov's not exactly big. Yeah, you know, it's it's a eight plus one single well, stack so, handgun. So what happened was. Uh, Something happened with ammo prices a few years ago. I think everybody remembers. And, you know, hanging out with Luke. And Luke's like, you should probably pick up some 9 mil while you can. And so I'm like sitting on my couch. My eyes are half closed. And I went to, I think it was ammo.com. And I'm just scrolling through and I'm like 9 millimeter buy. And I went, da, 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 just like jamming the plus button. Yeah. And then I hit order. 
And then when it shows up, Luke walks into the box and he's like, oh, cool, the ammo's here. And then he opens it and he's like, this is Russian. And I was like, I don't know. And he opens the box and he goes, bro, these aren't nine millimeters. And I was like, what? It says nine, nine millimeter. And it's got all Russian writing on it. Yep. So we ended up with a very large quantity of Makarov nine millimeter. And then I was like, great success. <laughs> great success. But uh, the company, they're awesome. I think it was Amazon.com. They, they emailed me being like, we realized you ordered a large quantity of Makarov rounds and may have made a mistake. If, you're, if, you're, if, if, if that was, we will gladly ship out, you know, nine millimeter Luger. And I was like, no, 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 no. No, I'm keeping this, and I'm going to go find a Makarov that, uh, a weapon. And then a local gun shop had uh, uh, the P64. Yeah. And I was really excited to be like, oh, cool, Soviet. And it just hurts, and nobody wants to use it. You could definitely rebarrel like a, like a PP-19, essentially a Vichaz, uh, which is like the AK 9mm <clears throat> carbine that they've got. Yeah. Uh, you could easily just, well, not easily. It would take a good bit of work, but you could make up a, a custom... Uh, nine millimeter Makarov barrel for that. They they run them in nine by eighteen in Russia. But I, I was talking to a, a, a gun shop if they were able to do that, and everybody says yes, but we just never did because we don't really care that much. But it would be cool to have like a yeah. you know nine millimeter rifle of some sort. I think the, the Bison one, the the one with the helical magazine on the bottom, uh, that one is nine by eighteen, or at least they had one in nine by eighteen. What's what's that ridiculous twenty two that's got the the magazine magazine goes on top? Yeah, I got yeah, one of those. Yeah, I don't know calico. Called. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah one fun. of those two. They're so weird. It's the, yeah. like the Spaceballs guns. Like, right. Like okay. stick out of the top. At, like, no, no, no. Kind of it's of? flat, but it's got a, how many, as a whole, it's a lot. It's a hundred. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like a spiral staircase of ammunition yeah. all oh. the way through the gun. Cool. Like, yeah. yeah. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's it, like the P90 does the, what's the horizontal magazine? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a similar thing where it's on top, but they're just sideways to the shooter. And then they've got like a, a rotary table that, you know, flips it to the right orientation before it loads in the chamber. There's some cool old stuff you can buy, man. I love... Uh, Luke wanted me to buy a 9mm crank Gatling cannon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Luke, come on. And he was like, come on, you gotta get it. And it's like... Duk, 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 duk. I've got a real one of those <laughs> in 45 long gold. <laughs> How is it? I haven't shot it yet, but we're, we want to do a uh, Last Samurai video with it. Nice. Oh, oh, they use it? They actually introduce machine gunning? And is that the yeah. plot of the movie? Is that like the dawn of the guns? Essentially, yeah. Mm. It's It's... If you haven't seen the movie, it's a fantastic film. Tom for, Cruise. Yeah, for everybody that thinks the machine guns are a, a recent invention, watch that one. Yeah, oh, sure. yeah. I mean, even uh, what, like the 13, 1300s, they had the multi-barrel. Mm -hmm. So it was like like a dozen or two dozen barrels, and they're all muzzle-loaded, but then they would like pull something and go, bop, 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 bop. I'm just, yep. that's crazy. I was looking at the company. It's called Taurus USA that makes this graphene gun. It's called the GX4 Graphene. And apparently it's lightweight. It's Taurus. Oh no! I recommend Taurus. Yeah, not yeah, yeah. Buying so a Taurus. I was thinking, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I was thinking graphene. Like this must be emerging technology. And then I heard Taurus. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be three hundred bucks and well, disposable. Right. Is yeah. it? Are they known for producing shoddy, shoddy work? I don't want yeah, to crap on anybody. They're not great. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm fascinated with graphene being implemented in modern weaponry because it's so lightweight and durable. Yeah. All right. I mean, you could right. probably make a cool f a frame for like a Glock out of it. Let's uh, read some more. Russian Kluter says two A is winning. Tim Pool, you got to stop saying this and resting on your laurels. Until I, as a regular citizen, can dual wield a full auto saw and a high point with a switch, then 2A hasn't won anything. Listen, my friends. <laughs> Graphene it, saw, baby. That was an excellent tweet. Uh, 2A is winning. It doesn't mean it's won, right? So winning is repealing the NFA, uh, yeah. among other things. But that's like, that, that's a huge win. Let's say that there is a, a big field. Let's, let's say you're playing football and you are pressed all the way back up against the, uh, uh, the end zone. And then yeah. you actually start advancing forward. You are, you are winning, but you haven't won. Or how about this? Let's say you're playing baseball. The other team has like three runs, and then uh, you score two in one run. You have started winning. You have not won yet. Let's say they have seven. You know, it's like the sixth inning, and they have seven runs, and you have eight. You are winning. They still can, can pull ahead. That's why I say, well, the 2A stuff, you can't stop. We have made tremendous gains, massive gains, hit a few grand slams. But there is still an effort by Democrats to ban uh, standard issue, standard capacity weapons, claiming that 10 is too many when 10 is, is, is minimal. It's, 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 it's laughable. Everybody knows. You're all gun people. You get it. I'm just saying you've got to recognize when you're winning. You need the morale boost. You need the charge. You know, we are, we are getting this. But you have to make sure people don't rest on their laurels, which is exactly what I said yesterday. We may be winning with constitutional carry, but we need to get rid of the ATF and the NFA. Yep. And in fact, I'll, I'll be honest. 
the idea of an alcohol, tobacco, and firearms and explosive division, I have no problem with as a surface level idea that there is someone in charge of, you know, overseeing this for some reason. What we don't need is a law enforcement agency that questions whether or not people have a right to keep in barrels. So, no. How about just the TFE? Tobacco, firearms, and explo No, 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 no. The ATE. Alco, tobacco, and explosives. Firearms, no, it's constitutional. <laughs> no. It's still confusing me why alcohol and firearms are anywhere. I mean, I guess drunk. They're the fun police, dude. Yep. They are the fun police. <laughs> Sons of bitches. No, 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 no. I don't drink. Drinking's bad. But firearms constitutionally protected. So I'll say this. Until the Constitution is amended, American citizens have a right to keep and bear nuclear and biological weapons, antimatter weapons, rail guns, you name it. And every, anything else is an infringement. Oh, is this where we're coming back to nuclear weapons now? So you don't get to arbitrarily decide that arms in the Constitution only applies to what they had back then. It's in the greater context of what was allowed. Uh, private corporations build nukes. Like, yeah. where do people think nukes come from? So yes, it's not, it's not uh, 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 controversial for me to say private individuals have the right to keep and bear nuclear weapons. In fact, they quite literally do right now. There actually is on the ATF eForm site when you, where you go as like an FFL to uh, register like, hey, like I'm building a machine gun. I'm you know, building a suppressor. I'm doing whatever. There is a slot on that website to uh, complete the form as I am building a nuclear weapon. Well, yeah, these, these big weapons manufacturers have to do it. Yeah. And my, my, my big thing, my, my big take on that was always like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's legal. The, the thing that is stopping people from making nuclear weapons is not because there is a law. Oh, right. Yeah. If, if <laughs> it's there is, good luck. <laughs> if there is somebody like, let's say, Elon Musk, who had the billions of dollars and, let's say, I don't know, thousands of rocket engineers to make ICBMs and, you know, whatever he wants to do. Elon, strangely, starts buying a bunch of plutonium and uranium. And right. Oh, <laughs> people are going to start sweating real hard because it's like the only thing stopping him is not the law. It's just he hasn't decided to do it yet. It's not worth the legal headache. What if Elon was just like, I'm going to nuke Mars? Nuke the poles. Yeah, he, uh, he had but, mentioned that that might be a way to start to superheat the What did the, the Polish atmosphere. do to you? Oh, oh, got it. Yeah. <laughs> I love the poles, but nuke the poles of Mars. Uh, it might superheat the the mag and kick the magnetic He's field. Oh, that's, a, oh, that's a, yeah. <laughs> He's not. I'm kidding. That checks out. <clears throat> okay, let's read some more com uh, comments here. What do we got? Braymont says, Congressman Herrera, you'll win. As a letter carrier, I've had to deal with mountain lions, etc. And city of carriers deal with being robbed and shot. Please keep in your mind when you go to D.C. that postal workers want to be armed. When you go to D.C. I like that kind of confidence there. I just hate the idea of having to go to D.C. for anything. Yeah, Fair what enough. you just spend 28 days a month in D.C. Everyone's trying to. There, th not. There's probably like 17 or 20 super chats telling me that you have to say the word trunnion. <laughs> <laughs> I know this inside joke. It's, it's I don't know between. what it means. But after like the the twentieth super chat, I'm like, okay, I'll just ask. Yeah, it's the 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 T word is the the front uh, and rear T word on on an AK, and it's it's a running joke with me and uh, and angry cops. He he likes the way that I say trunnion. <laughs> so, there you guys go. There you go. Cylindrical protrusion used Angry. as a mounting or pivoting point. That's the definition of trunnion. Well, <laughs> Let's grab another super chat. Oh, where are we at? Where are we at? It's getting late. Oh, people are mad at Ian. Uh, <laughs> no, I doubt it. The Mick Clone Code says, Ian, I'm a Christian. And yes, love does cover a multitude of sins, but not all of them. For the rest, forgiveness follows repentance. There is no repentance from the left, just warfare. Oh, that's so black pill. But I think it's, it's the general idea is Republicans are not indicting Democrats at all. Democrats are indicting tons of Republicans and lawyers and media personalities and the Republicans are like, guys, please chill out before this gets bad. And they're like, nah. And then you're like, we should pardon the Democrats. And I see like, humans what? targeting humans right now, and it's concerning. I'm looking for a way out. So how about this? Would you agree that the people engaging in the hostilities should stop doing it? You mean like the political? Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, absolutely. I do not like using the force of law to go after political opponents. I don't think that fear is the way forward. I don't think that trying to make Donald Trump disappear is going to make the Trump movement disappear. You got to work together. That's the whole point of being an American. Well, there you go. I a lot of people are also saying. Is, I, I think the entire thing was that it's, it's unilateral. 
the yeah. the you the weaponization of the federal government tends to be unilateral which like i'm not saying the republicans never do it i'm just saying that the, the ideals that a lot of republicans and libertarian leaning people hold prevents them in their own moral compass from using the weapons of government against their opponents which is where they lose you know so how was, the, yeah, uh, sorry the, the ak-50 is, is that meant to be full auto uh, oh, now, now we get to the real one. So we have, uh, so it's a shoulder fired. It's I wasn't just like joking, a barrack. I was serious. It's like a shoulder fired semi auto 50 BMG. If, if you've ever, if you want the AK 50 to be full auto, it lets me know you've never fired a semi auto 50, <laughs> a shoulder fired 50. However, what was shoulder as in like you're holding it up? Yeah. Yeah, or, or I like got a on a bipod or anything. I, 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 no. I have. I have a Barrett M82. Yeah. Uh, so and you know, said, it's, a heavy, it's a heavy sucker. Oh, I could. Like, uh, who? I can't remember who we were with, but one. Uh, who was it? it was Luke. What? Luke. I think, yeah, Luke actually lifted it up and held it. He did not fire it, though, and he was holding it. But it's like 70 pounds oh, or something. I, it's heavy. Oh, it's, it's, I think it's 28 pounds. Or, th oh, or the, the M82, I think, might be 30, 31. Oh, I was way like off that. then. But it's it's I, I've I've shoulder fired a magazine from it from the Barrett. It's it's possible to do. It's just you're going to be shaky arms the whole time. The but, uh, uh, what, what's the other one? The RN fifty two is that what it's called? Uh, the breech loader. The, oh, the breech the 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 cap screw. Cutter. Yeah, yeah. What yeah, is that? The RN fifty. RN fifty. Yeah, I, I that think... was the one that blew up on Scott. Oh, I saw oh, the video. Kentucky ballistics. Yeah. Mm. See, uh... how's he Who's doing? Loader? He's doing great, man. He was just I RN mentioned 50. like 400 pounds the other day. The man's an animal. So uh, even after getting his entire chest, I'm glad that he's everything. that much. If he didn't weigh that much, he, might have, he would definitely would have died. We, yeah. we we were out at a range and they had the RN50, and I didn't want to fire this one. It's a scary gun because the first person who fired it, the shockwave turned my phone off. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, but, but it put it to sleep. I was I don't whatever that I must have pushed the button. I don't know. I was filming it, and I'm I'm holding my phone up from the sides very close and and then my phone is off and i was yeah. like what being in I the was, muzzle brake being in the vents of the muzzle yep. brake on that is objectively worse than being behind it and i was like i don't it's, want i don't want to i don't want to shoot that one it's a tbi machine you shoot that 20 <laughs> times in a row you're gonna have a nosebleed i got a surefire muzzle brake on my 556 with a 145 barrel and that stuff sucks to stand next to man yeah oh it's miserable what's tbi but, tbi traumatic, traumatic brain, brain injury. injury oh wow but uh so this was another guy who owned it and then I bought, uh, because Luke insisted, he, he, Luke sends me guns nonstop. He's like, buy this, buy this, buy this. And so <laughs> good, I bought Good man. A, yeah. I bought a Barrett M82. And uh, that, it's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I think. You're further away, too, from the muzzle on, yeah. on the M82. But uh, I had no issue whatsoever. I, I was like, oh, 12 gauge, my Remington causes me more shoulder issue, more, more shoulder pain than the Barrett does. Because it's lighter. So lighter? The, the, the weight of the weapon plays significantly oh, right. into recoil especially and also, and with a nice muzzle brake isn't there a recoil spring like a buffer tube and a recoil spring in the in the barrett so it's a short recoil system so basically what that means is that uh every gun every every rifle will have like lock up that stops the gun from just exploding right so the breech is locked when the gun fires short recoil systems like the barrett m82 uh is when the barrel reciprocates a little bit like an inch or two to unlock the bolt and so that, and it, it unlocks a little bit, so it doesn't need gas or anything like that, like a normal like AK or AR. So just the short, the action of the barrel moving back unlocks it, and then it has a big, uh, you know, a buffer system. Through Steven, it. Steven Crowder famously got me a, uh, I think a Sig M400 it's called. It's mm -hmm. been a while. And uh, it was very difficult to get because he had to send it to New Jersey. So they were like, it was nuts. The modifications had to be done before it could be sent out. And so it took like a year before I actually got it. Mm. And so we went to the we, we'd go to the range, and I would use like uh, uh, Harper's Ferry Armory out here has their own what they describe as mil spec five five six AR fifteen. Mm -hmm. And then when I got when when I finally got the the Sig from Crowder, it's night and day how amazing it was. Yeah, it was wow. I was just it was. What was different? It was easy. The 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 way I would describe it is, it 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 almost felt it, it felt more like firing a twenty two than firing a five five six. Like yeah, it was it was good. It was. Uh, I, I I'm not I'm not, I'm not a gun expert enough to explain anything beyond I mean I think it's got like a muzzle break uh, I don't know what else about it easier to aim easier to handle less recoil obviously I think the muzzle yeah. break is is causing that a muzzle break will help a lot but really what what a lot of them do is uh, <coughs> excuse me a lot of cheaper five five six or a cheaper any any gas operated rifle uh, what they'll do is that they'll they'll over gas it uh, slightly or or maybe a lot because they won't they don't have the technical precision to make it super reliable so they're like okay well if we can't make it really reliable on good gas we'll make it super reliable on 
a lot of gas. So no matter what happens, this thing that bolt carrier is running back. The and way so, that it, uh, it just shoves it really hard. Yeah, and so like if you have a uh, uh, like a properly gassed, well made gun, the recoil impulse is a lot less because it's not necessarily just the you know Newtonian physics of the recoil of the gun of the shot going off, but a lot of that's the bolt carrier impact onto the rear of the gun that's pushing you know the recoil impulse super sharp. What's what gas is used? So uh, in any gas operator, in most like automatic firearms or whatever, uh, anything gas op, they'll bleed off some gas from the bullet being fired uh, down the barrel and it feed it back in. So uh, AR-15s bleed it off through a little gas tube. Uh, ARs use a, a long stroke gas piston and it just bleeds off from the barrel and hits the bolt carrier, which then cycles the firearm. So let's, that, uh, that's what unlocks it. Let's just grab a couple more. Kevin Malone says, hey, Phil, I went to the Baby Metal concert in Houston, ah. and the opening act, your boy Jason, is a heck of an instrumentalist. He yeah. is the best guitar player on the planet Earth. That guy's agree. wild, dude. All right, we'll grab one more. My He's third nut insane. says, Brandon, you should propose a bill so that government officials and security are only allowed to use firearms that are readily available for citizens to use. I'm down for that. Well, I, I think a lot of these... Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of these people would have different opinions if they didn't live in, you know, their nice uh, mansions with private security, half of which funded by taxpayers. I think they yep. have a little bit of a different opinion. Agreed. All right, everybody. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share the show with your friends. Head over to TimCast.com. Click join us. Become a member. Why? Not only do you get access to the Discord where you can hang out with like-minded individuals. They, there's a, an after show every night. An after-after show. Monday through Thursday, we do the uncensored members only. And then our members created their own show to hang out afterwards. It's the coolest thing ever. You guys rock. And uh, that was kind of the big goal with creating this community so that you guys could talk to each other, share ideas, and uh, work on projects and things like that. Also, as a member, every Friday, we choose a member to shout out and promote their brand, product, or project. Uh, this week, we didn't do it because we're promoting the Miami event, and we've really got to push. But, you know, hopefully, hopefully next week, I think, we'll, we'll kick back into full gear, start shouting you guys out again. And uh, uh, we just want you guys to know that the goal of everything we're doing is to build culture, expand culture, and win a culture war. So proceeds we generate from you being a member as a for-profit company go into our, uh, our company for our own private discretion, which tends to be things like buying billboards, setting up coffee shops, trying to build an anti-Times Square, or like, you know, when we all, we all teamed up and you guys gave Super Chats and we were able to contribute to Tim Ballard in the amount of $50,000 which half came from you guys. That's the coolest thing ever. And so right now we're thinking about how do we buy the statue of Lenin and then desecrate it. And uh, I don't know if we can. We're exploring it. Just know that if there's one thing I, would, I, I want to do more than anything else, it's not hoard money and buy fancy cars. It is buying the statue of Lenin from Seattle and desecrating it with Phil Labonte. That is like the thing you do with money. Pee so. on it. <laughs> you can do that for free now. I can't wait. That being said, it costs the price of a, a decent sized house. So I don't know if something like that is possible, but that's the general idea of what we do, right? The, the, the more we grow, the more we're going to build cultural endeavors and just reinvest back into everything we're already doing. So thank you all so much. You can follow the show at Timcast IRL. You can follow me personally at Timcast. Brandon, do you want to shout anything out? Uh, just uh, Brandon Herrera for Congress.com is uh, where that's the campaign website where we got a lot of good grassroots support. And man, I appreciate you having me on the show. It's been oh, any, any time, you. dude. Absolutely. It's about time we made it happen. Yeah. Finally, Brandon is here. We appreciate it. Uh, make sure you vote for him if you're from Texas. I'm Phil Labonte. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Phil That Remains. On Instagram, I'm at Phil That Remains Official. The band is all that remains. You can follow us on Spotify, on what is it? App, Amazon Music, Apple Music, YouTube, you know. The internet you follow me at ian crossland everywhere and anywhere on the internet at ian crossland there it is behind me if you want to get a good look at how to spell that always a pleasure brandon really good to see you and it's the ak guy let me see the ak guy on twitter when people follow you there yes sir looking forward to talking to you again man i feel like we could go two hours just talking about guns absolutely that really oh, awesome oh, i mean we that's, should that's yeah. all i'm used to yeah, maybe we should have you back for a culture war episode to talk about guns. We should absolutely. all go down and shoot guns with them it's a oh, better yeah. idea i like on that. a weekend it's a weekend they we go on a weekend when you're not filming. Where in Texas? Uh, San Antonio. San Antonio. So I, we could, we'll sick. open the whole shop up to you. It's basically an arms museum. It's we should maybe we've ever maybe featured. we do Tim Cast Gun Week and we go down. That would freaking rule. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Let's plan it. Um, yeah, we could we could totally do it. Rock and roll. Holidays are coming up, so it might be like February. Let's freaking do it's it, warm man. in Texas oh, no. in February. No, 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 no. Yeah, fe we're, February we're, is beautiful in Texas. We're, we're doing the Michael Malice Roseanne uh, challenge in January. So oh yeah, we'll be, we'll be in Austin. 
We can figure oh, something really? out. Oh, Texas nice. Is yeah, gonna it's get hot. only like okay. an hour south it's like of 45 Austin. 45 minutes away. Bro. What yeah. we want to do is have a show at the Comedy Mothership with Rose, uh, IRL Live with Roseanne and Michael Malice because they had a bet on this show. I think, what was the bet? That there would be military tribunals this year or something? That was Roseanne's, yeah, Roseanne's right. postulation. And so, so Michael laughed and said, I will, I will bet you that's not the case. And then we all decided, let's do a show where, where Michael or Roseanne pays the other person and we have a good time. And So uh, we're going to be reaching out. I don't know if it's possible. It might just be too soon for the mothership, but we thought it would be really fun to have like Roseanne, one of the legends of comedy, and we do this political com comedy thing. So uh, we should be down there. Yeah, because if it's not there, it'll be like Vulcan or something. We'll figure yeah, it out. That's that's right down the road. It's like an hour away from us. So. Perfect. Awesome. This rules. Sweet. Carter Banks. What's up, guys? When I'm not pressing the buttons for Surgeon Kellen, I'm making music. I got a ton of songs that are all almost done. Been working on for a while. So if you go to TrashHouseRecords.com, you can get what we've already put out. Um, Tim Cast songs on YouTube. Tim Cast music, and you can follow me personally at Carter Banks on Twitter and Carter Banks Four L on Instagram. So, yeah. Right on. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out this Friday. Uh, if you didn't already, check out the Culture War episode from this morning. A lot of people are like, Tim, you have such great patience. And I'm like, oh, we have to have these conversations. And uh, it's for you guys to, to listen to and to share and uh, to, to make of it what you will. We're going to have clips up throughout the weekend, and then we're back on Monday, and we will see you all then.